All right, all right. My fucking turn now. Enough's enough. This will fucking stop the lies on me. My turn to show the real court fucking documents. All, all of them. I don't want to hear from anybody telling me, leave them alone. They ain't got nothing but lies. I'm going to show you people how much scumbags they are. Fuck Turbs McGurg, Ace Pill, they all lie. So I had enough. Now I'm going to show you the real court fucking documents, okay? I'm going to show you. Not like they did. I'm going right to the website. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how full of shit they are. Enough's enough. They don't get to fucking lie on me no more. They don't. They're fucking morons. And I hope to God you show my medical records. Please do. Please do. Number one, I wasn't Baker acting. I was in a county jail for pretrial. And I was in the medical ward. You dumb fucks. Should I show that too? You go ahead. You keep doing what you're doing. I'm going to blast everything I got on each and every one of you. Two more to find out all your info. I don't give a fuck who hates me on the Stabbleverse. I don't give a fuck who talks to me. They don't get to fucking escape. They're terrorizing me with lie after fucking lie after lie. They're scumbags. Okay? Don't get the fuck away. It don't work like that in life. Are they fucking kidding me? Are they really kidding me? Are they that serious? They're that serious to think they could they 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 think this is their game? Huh? That's what they think. They think that they could do it. They could dox. They could fuck them all, them drunk bitches. Okay? No, I don't no 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 no. It's done. It's done. Nobody. I don't grift anybody, but I'm sick and tired of people lying on me, pal. It's time. We're going to go to Pinellas County Court Records with the, with, with the checks that they showed 15 fucking times every show. They got to show the same thing, and they don't show you the fucking truth. It looks fake. Below me, okay? Uh, the Pinellas County Clerk of the Courts is fake, huh? You're a piece of shit. You're all the same. Piece of shits. Had it. This is done. They don't get to get, they don't get the fucking duties anymore. They, it just don't fucking happen like this. No more. Sorry to tell you. Don't happen like this. Just don't, it don't happen like this. All right. Okay, I gotta, I gotta have to figure out how to make my screen bigger. Hang on now. No, okay, let me go to the actual court there. Okay, so I'm here. So, here's where it all started. This is where it all, this is amended information. Okay. This is, this is the documents. Now let me go back here, make sure these are showing the right way so I can go. Oh, I've got to stroll this like this, let you read. And I'm going to show you every fucking document. Everything I said was the outcome was true. And they want to lie. They don't get to do that. Anymore. I'm sorry. I don't care who likes me, who hates me. I don't care anymore. No one, no one gets to, gets to dictate that and call me a liar when I'm not. Okay? I don't care who wants to talk to me anymore, who wants to watch my, I don't care. Enough's enough. I've been nothing but the most real person in this whole freaking 10 months. And these punk, punk kids are punks. They they don't they 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 don't get you might allow it to you. This man don't. Sorry, don't happen like that. But we're gonna go 
You can see this. Circuit Court. This was the original filing. See, I have to. So you guys see, I'm going to have to go back and scroll because. All right. So here. Yes. When it first started out, I was sent letters for like two months saying that before they brought criminal charges, they I had an opportunity to, to go talk to them. Again, none of that mail was sent to me. But again, I take accountability. I knew I was going to be away from baseball. I should have transferred my mail. So I got it. Can't blame nobody else. It's my fault. So when I, when I found out that four warrants were issued for checks that I said were and they, they said, I'm lying about the mounts and all that. But I got all the copies, all the copies that are checked, all the receipts in here with the judge signing paid in full. We're going to show you the end result, what I said happened. OK, and then I'm, I'm waiting for the transcripts. This transcript, I don't know if you people know what transcripts are, of each court appearance. That's where the step, the, the, the person with the, you know, that does the, the, the court reporter, that every word for word that's said by the judge, the prosecutor, uh, by, by defense attorney, by me, anything that is said in court is in a transcript. All right. And those transcripts also tell the truth. I've called them out several times. Why don't you? Sh they show meaningless, worthless shit. OK. I told them. I told them. And do you know what? Does anybody know, got a law back? Do you know what this means? Withhold adjudication. Do you understand what that means? You understand? That means I wasn't guilty or innocent. I withheld, they withheld adjudication. Okay? Court sealed. Ordering withholding adjudication of guilt. Means I didn't plead guilty and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't plead innocent. They withheld. Okay? I'm going to show you that through their website. I printed this, but I said, you know what? No, I'm going to go right to the website. I'm also going to show you receipts, every check, every case paid in full. I'm going to show you everything. So, I'm going to do it the right way. I'm not going to do it like them and where they print it, what they wanted to print, and they want to show what they want to show. No, I'm going to show you right from the website. I, this takes all fucking night. They don't get to lie no more on me. They don't get to do this no more. I'm sorry. It just ain't going to happen no more. Not to me. I'm done. They're the cowards. And I hope to God they go in and show my medical records. I promise you this is far from over. Okay. Regardless, regardless what happened, what I said how it happened, I said everything was restitution was paid. Okay. I'm going to show you that it was from a business account. I'm going to show you ain't my signature that the checks I'm responsible for. It doesn't matter because I didn't respond to the original letters of them wanting me to come down to talk to them to explain that they gave me a certain amount of time again my fault i had no knowledge that they were sending me letters but i'm not going to blame it on nobody my fault i'm a grown adult should have i should have transferred my mail with me to the baseball park so this way if anything important came in i would have been abrupted right away it's okay i don't care i don't want your money okay i don't want your money just like I lied about, demon I, I didn't get demonetized for a thumbnail. Posted that right from YouTube. They're so stupid, they do nothing but lie. And if you believe any hell that they had 900 people in there and they didn't buy the live views, you guys are nuts. He's flopped on every live show he's done. Trust me, they're as corrupt and liars and drunks and drug addicts, worse than I ever. Plus, they're, I'm double their age. They have no respect. I never claim to be a saint. Never. It's my business how I live my life, not one of your motherfuckers at all. You understand? So that, I don't give a fuck what you think. I don't give a fuck if you like doxing. It's about to come down. I'm going to do shows now, and I'm going to fucking dox. As soon as I find out who the last two guys are, it's on. I don't care who don't want to talk to me no more. Fuck you and fuck them. Okay? This is it. They want to play big boy. They want to play with the big boys. They're going to get spanked really hard. I hope Turb fucking McGurk or whatever the fuck his real name is. I hope he does. I hope he does do what he's threatening. First of all, he physically threatened me. So fuck him. Okay. Listen to me. 
at this moment, I'm being real. I'm sinning, but I'm going to make the truth come out. They don't get to lie on me. They don't get to do the same lie over and over every week. And I just can't believe how blindsided. You guys must be really idiots. If that's what you get off on, I, I feel for all you. Okay? They talk about my wife. You heard them. They want to fuck my wife. Ain't that what they said? They wish they could. Okay? They don't like the fact that I'm fucking married in a happy marriage. They don't like the fact that I got a fucking hot wife. They don't like the fact that I stand up to their fucking punk asses. They just think they could do what they want, and you got to run and bow to them. I'm not built like that. I'm done. I, from this day on, I don't give a fuck if anybody ever likes me. Take that to the bank. At least Ian Hawk did one thing right. My 2,000 views I get on my walk and talk stream are legit. When he told them straight up, no, he's telling the truth. That I don't got no reason to fucking lie. Who the fuck are you fucking scumbags I got to lie to? Huh? Okay? I promise you, all the ones calling out, you got deep fucking dark skeletons in your fucking closet. Okay? Yeah, that's right. You're damn right she is. And they don't like the fact that I got the woman. And they don't. They got this. They're done. They think they're invincible because one's in Canada and three are in fucking the UK. Don't work like that. We know information now. We're going to destroy them. We're going to see how they like to be ripped apart. How their families like to be ripped apart. I don't give a fuck anymore. I don't give a fuck who talks to me from a podcast. I don't care anymore. They don't get to fucking do this to me no more. They don't get to do this to me anymore. I talk about whoever the fuck I want. He's the fuck guy. He's always brave when he's got that alcohol in him, like he was tonight. They think by sending me a link, I, I, they, they, they want content. They want me to talk and drop their name. They say it. You think they're straight-laced, honest, fucking law-abiding people? Are you people insane? Oh, it's going to get good. Things, 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 things are going to get real good over the next couple months. I promise you, by myself, I don't care if there's a hundred of them. I guarantee you the end result is going to be me on top. I promise you that. Because you want to know why? The truth always prevails. Sick of this shit, man. Okay, so down, we're going to put that up there. I'm going to read some more, okay? You guys can read with me. All right. In the name of, uh, by the authority for the state of Florida, Bernie McKay, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there's the worthless checks in the county. Close the counts. Okay. Now I'm going to show you. I have to scroll down some more so I can get to the. Okay. They said I lied. It wasn't no business checks. It wasn't for four or five hundred. They fucking lie. They show my fingerprints. Who gives a fuck? What's my fingerprints got? Show the checks. Show the end result. Show the amended fucking change of plea. Did they show you that? No, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you I didn't fucking lie. I'm going to show you everything's paid in full and signed off by the judge. I couldn't have got the deal I got if everything was. I would I still be in court to this day if I didn't fucking do what I was supposed to do. I got fucked on this deal. Okay? Some drug addict I partied with. Took my fucking checkbook. That was and that was and I already had switched banks. A one reputable wasn't that was on Region Bank. We were I already switched to another bank. And they took the fucking checkbook out of the cab when I was away. Cash checks. Not my fucking signature. They were they proved that for that wasn't my signature. But I'm responsible. Someone's gotta pay my checks, my company. I got fucking took the responsibility, paid it. To this day, I don't know which fucking addict stole from me. I don't care. I took the hit because that's the way it's supposed to happen. I paid it like a man. And when the transcripts come, you're going to see how well the judge talked to me. How well. I hope I can get pictures of how well I dressed every month. How I went with respect. How the prosecutor offered me this if I do this. But I'm going to show you. Charged with four felonies, worthless checks. When I show you the document, the amended document from them, from the state's attorney's office, 
that says, brought to one misdemeanor charge, a misdemeanor, because I did everything I was supposed to. I honored everything. I was accountable. I did everything right. Transcript is going to tell you how well they talked about me, what I did for the community. Okay? I'm done. These punks do not get to do this anymore. And I don't give a fuck. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you. I'm everything I say I am. I'm all the way from suicidal to fucking psychotic. And people think they want to fuck with someone's mental, biz, mental, mental shit and, don't, and think it's a joke? Play with me. Play with me. I don't give a fuck. I'm not afraid of anything. Win, lose, or draw. They don't get to lie on me no more. Their fun's over. They've had their fun for 10 fucking months. Now I'm going to take them apart one by one. Fucking going to tell me that they went from fucking 54 fucking views their last night to fucking 900 and they didn't buy fucking fake views? You heard him. Is Joey C. fucking with us? Did some one of his people buy it? They knew something was wrong. And then you look, it went from down to fucking 900 to 64, up to 122, and then dead back up to fucking 900. Right here. Biggest pussies I've ever met. You have no, not a one-tenth of what these scumbags do to me on a daily basis. I asked for it all. I asked for it all, huh? I asked for it. You're damn right I did. I said, bring it. Oh, I'm going to get, it's going to get really ugly. Because now they want them. They want the old me. They got them. They want to see what I'm capable of. I hope they're prepared. I don't care anymore. Win, lose, draw, die. I don't care. Nobody, nobody is going to do this shit to me no more and fuck up my family anymore. I'm telling you, in a couple of days, there's going to be a big stream. There's some very serious people at that stream with me. It's on. It's time. It's time to see what they're fucking really made of. It's done. I'm done. My back is up. As far as they're going to push me into a wall. I'm not wrong. You fight fire with fire. You fight an eye for an eye. That's how, how I believe you fight. They take an arm, I'll take their fucking legs. They come with a knife, I promise you, they're going to go away with a gun. I don't give a fuck anymore. They're threatening me. I'm defending myself. They're trying to dismantle my fucking honor. No one's perfect in this world. Okay? Did I go hurt a human being? I hurt fucking a bank and a corporation. Fuck them banks. Fuck the insurance companies. As much as they rob everybody on a daily basis, I got caught. I was accountable. I paid what I was supposed to do. I did it right. Paid it all back. I don't rat. If they would have caught the guy, I would I would have did I would have not said I know him because I would have took care of that myself. I'm not gonna rat I know but put them in jail. I'll be accountable. I'll take the fucking heat. It's no big deal. I spent one time one day, I got time served one day. Paid big money to bond out and went to work with my lawyer. Had a great judge. And this was all resolved the right way. But they can't tell the truth. They can't say, okay, he he fucked up. He's a criminal. He wrote bad checks. But he did do what he said. He paid them all full. I'm going to show you all the fucking receipts. I'm going to show you what the judge signed off showing I paid it for. This $247, I have no fucking idea what it is. But I'm going to call tomorrow. I'm going to ask him. Why are all my receipts say paying full? There's $247. I have no knowledge for the last 11 years about until they brought it up. I have no knowledge what it is. I would not have got the deal I got if that was not settled in court and paid to what I was supposed to pay. Do you understand how the law works? When they tell you, you got ample amount of time to pay this back. You honor what you're saying you're doing right and sign on. We will do what we're going to say. So I either did it or I went to jail. I went from four felonies, four felony arrest warrants for fraudulent checks to one misdemeanor, and everybody was paid back. Okay? Everything I said, I spent, trust me, in tenfold. I'm going to show you the amount of the check. They said, I lied. It wasn't no four or $500 check. They weren't, they weren't taxi cab checks. Okay. Well, they're lying. 
They laugh. They're high. They're idiots. They're kids. They're drunk. How many people seriously got a wife and a family that's with me right now? How many of you? Hmm? I want to know. Seriously, how many people are good family people that are here right now? They have children they love, wife they love, good, decent human beings, but they, they, they like comedy. They like, they like the good old-fashioned ribbon. They like to have fun. How many do I have with me right now? Hmm? Be honest. Okay, that's the problem with your people. You have no honesty. You have no honor. None of you. None of you. You're scared to say you're, you're a happy married man or you have, you have a happy family and you love your family? That, that, that's too much? That's, that, that, that you can't say that? If you got it, then you don't think too highly of your family. If you think it's okay to call drunk and physically voicemail saying you want to rape a three-month-old baby and you think that's normal when you know he's got a little girl, Hmm? It's the father of a little girl that's a couple years older than my little granddaughter. That's okay. Huh? You guys have no fucking clue who I am, pal. I've been soft. My old age got me fucking stupid being soft with these punks. No more. No more. I don't give a fuck. They can call the federal fucking government, the CIA, the motherfucking FBI. I don't give a fuck. Been down the road many a times. I remember days of my life where I fucking feds followed me every fucking corner I turned. I don't give a fuck. I don't break laws no more. I'm accountable for every wrong I did. I've never harmed any human being. Ever. Took advantage of anybody. Never. I respected my elders. I made sure the children were safe in the neighborhood. Yeah, I was like Prince Charming. That's what I was like. Robin Hood. That's right. Order in my neighborhood in Chicago. These punks couldn't fucking, they, oh, they couldn't walk a tenth of a fucking block in my neighborhood where I grew up at. First of all, they would be marked. Because that's what they are. They'll be labeled as punk marks, bitches. And wouldn't make it down the block, ten feet into the block. You guys have no clue who I am. You have no clue what I'm capable of doing. You don't push a man like me, you don't. I speak nothing but the truth. I begged. I told him to go away. Leave me alone. Stop lying on me. If you're going to talk about me, tell the truth. Leave me alone. You don't want to go down these roads. You're a bunch of punks. You think you're invincible because you're over in the UK. You're not. I don't care anymore. They threaten me. I got all the emails. I'm defending myself. I'm calling self-defense. Let me get arrested if something happens. No jury will convict me when the proof is shown how they harass me. How they mentally fuck with me. How I just want to put a gun to my fucking head and blow my brains out. Okay? I'm done with this shit. They're going to be want to act like men? It's time to be motherfucking men time they think they've won. where have they won people that know me have they moved me anywhere where have they won hmm? they say what they want they want me to talk over they want to clout fucking chase me because they can't stand what i got what they want they're talking about how they're content creators they really are huh they they're, those guys are what they steal everybody else's content lie and sit around and lie? No respect. They're punks. Two more to go. I'm almost there. We know we're gonna know who the last two are in a couple of days here. And it's on. And I I as, as the many people that I respect in this Dabbleverse, I don't care if you ever speak to me. I don't care what you say about me. It's on. I thought about this hard. Two wrongs don't make a right. But these are not human beings. So when their family, who has no involvement, even know what they do, is drugged through the mud like they drug my family through the mud, it's on them. They could answer to their family, not me. I'm just going to give them back what they've done to me. I don't give a fuck about, they put my fucking, they dox me 20 times way before I ever fucking talked about. They lie. They lie. Okay? Now I don't give a fuck. I got nothing to hide. I ain't afraid of nothing. I don't care. I, I'm just done. I've had it to hear. They want an atom bomb, they're going to get one. 
They're punks. They stink by sending me a link. Oh, we won't, we won't gang up. I don't give a fuck. They're pussies. All they wanted me to go on there so they could fucking make more content. They, they're stupid. You guys really think them low life scumbags had a, a, almost a thousand live views, huh? You buy that shit. They're, they're passing off that I bought them for them. First of all, I don't waste money like that. Second of all, I don't ever do that for my fucking own channel. At least Ian Hawk was smarter. You know, I always, at the point, I got to say he was, you know, he, I'm telling you, he said it. Joey C ain't lying. Those are legit. My walk and talk stream I did because of you people. The chat room asked me to do it, said it would be a great idea to be success. I failed in many things we tried, and we keep trying to try to find the right combination to work it. And then they made a comment today at the end about, wait till I find out who Mrs. Honeybee is. They're talking about Kai's wife. So now they're trying to pin Kai against me. And then they shut up. They just put that phony shit out. Good people that never bother nobody. What has Kai's wife done to anybody? What has that woman done to anybody? What has my wife done to any of you guys? Huh? I can't help you got an ugly boyfriend or ugly girlfriend. I can't help that all you got is this. You should be happy for a brother when he's got a fucking good woman. Okay? When you act like a man, you get a good woman. When you act like a boy, you get little girls. Ian Hawk has zero respect for women. And definitely don't respect his wife and his daughter. I've heard him say many times his family don't know what he does. They don't know anything about his internet and their actions. They're going to find out soon. Real soon. He thinks I'm fucking playing. I give you guys. I'm, I just listen. 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 When, when this all explodes and, and it's been taken, it, it takes its time. You know, things got to be done right. Got to be done right. When it does happen, two things are going to happen. I'm either going to be with 10,000 people hating my guts or 10,000 people saying you fought for what you believe in, you won. I got no reason to lie. They fucked with the wrong crazy motherfucker. That's all I'm going to tell you. And I don't care no more. I don't. I don't care. Everything is going to be self-defense on my part. I, I, oh. They think because they live overseas, they're invincible. That's their fucking claim to fame. Or the guy that lives in Nova Scotia, the guy that's, you know, the big guy that lives in the woods who picked up two guys like a pinball machine and threw him. He's a tough badass. Yeah, he's so tough. They sit there and tell you how they set me cease and desist laughing about it. And they think that, oh, I got to, you better listen to us. We, we we're called, fuck them. I don't get, I don't go crying to nobody. Now, I am a nut, pal. You ain't seen nothing yet. I'm the nut. No, the sick individuals that lie, who are scum, who have families, who lie to their families. Good thing. Oh, well, you know, you're right. I was a stand-up citizen and gave my firearms back. But let me tell you something about the law. I paid my debt to society. And I could file to expunge certain things. And I could also get my rights back for my firearms. You understand? Just because I went to prison don't mean I, don't, I can't restore my rights. Know the law if you're going to talk crazy. I filed all the necessary paperwork. What I can expunge will be expunged. And I'm going to get my rights restored after a certain period of time. I'm eligible. So when that happens... You know, then things, then, then it really changes. But at this moment, if I had a firearm, it would be illegal. So I don't break the law. I don't need a gun. I got this. I got these. And I know how to use them. Okay? Very simple. They take everything I say and call me everything out of my mouth a liar. <laughs> that's, that's over. It's done. They don't get to fucking talk to me like that no more. Talk about me no more. They, they don't get that right anymore. They don't. Enough's enough. Thank you, citizen. My, my back is going no more into the wall. I let them play for 10 months. I let them, let them play. I let them do their thing. Now it's my turn. They're going to lot like it. Not going to like it. 
They said, oh, he's trying to recruit everybody to not pay attention to us. I don't have to do that. I'll do it alone. I've already told you, I, I don't need nobody's support. I think if you believe in them, you're making a big, bad choice. I do like to hope that I can count on some of these clippers to help me with some things. I'm not very savvy with the computer or how to present the show. Like, I don't understand. I'm, I'm trying to show the court right now, and it's so, it, I can't even see it on my screen. I don't know what the hell the setting's on. And then I have to go put it in this mode, but then I can't scroll down. It's messed up. I don't know what you guys see on the screen. Right now, I'm looking at my stream yard, <coughs> and I can't, I can't read anything there. I have to go to the actual website while you guys are looking at this through YouTube, and I have to stroll. And I don't know if you see that. So I guess the best way for me to see, I guess, is go to, I guess I go to YouTube and see how it looks to you guys. Then maybe I could, maybe it'd be better for me because right now looking at StreamYard, I can't read nothing. I can't see nothing. It's, it's just terrible. I don't know if it's my settings. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to lie. I'm not computer savvy. I don't, I'd learn. I'd like to learn everything, but I don't really know how to do those clip things and put things together in packages. I, I want to learn, but there's some people out there that I know that do like me. And I think would be willing to help me. And I'm not asking for nothing for free. I mean, I, I'd work out something. I couldn't pay you a bunch, but I'd be, I definitely would, would, would do, do something for you. You know, and if you're willing to help me just on a professional level, if I can present my, it's my turn out to show how they lie. I just want to present a professional to you guys. My feelings for them, I, I, I shouldn't take it on you guys. What I don't like is the people that condone it. Well, what's wrong with you, the ones that condone it? I mean, seriously, seriously, they could say me and my wife are scum. We we killed our own child. That's what they said tonight. We're responsible for Savannah dying. We're scumbags. Enough's enough. My daughter ain't here to defend herself. OK, and, and, and you know what? It's sad. You got to attack someone. Then they lied. Melton, we begged Melton for one hundred fifty dollars. I got the emails from Melton. Melton was trying to make an apology to us because he tore us up for a whole week and said, what can I do to make it better for you? I, I want to, I want to, I got this money from the wall. I, I'm thinking about sending you guys. And my wife says, we don't want to take this money. I go, she goes, I go, I don't know. Ask, I, what, he wants to help. We thought he was sincere. So my wife wrote him a nice email. Okay. My daughter's in a nice urn. We're not scumbags. We weren't responsible. Some other person was. She wasn't a kid. She was a mother, and she was a great kid. When we left, I still paid my bills every month. She had enough money in the bank for me when I was going to be gone for six months. I'm just saying, they act like we just left her destitute, some young girl in the world. I understand. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that we didn't leave her destitute. I laid out every, everything to write for bills. And she had everything to take care of her like a father and mother supposed to. Okay. And it's not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not, she's not here. I, you guys, if you got kids, what they say, what they've done and melt a lie. Ian Hawk sister with a straight face and fucking lies. and said, we, we didn't beg, melt it off it to us. I got all the emails. Okay. Believe me. So my wife just said, I don't want to take, we don't, we're not that type of, so she, she, she said, well, you know, you want to buy a, you want to buy a nice shirt for my daughter? That's all my wife said. And he made it into a comedy fucking show. Because he's a heartless piece of shit. You guys know Ian Hawke's wife, that school teacher? You guys know that? You know he's got a lovely little girl? And he lies to both of them every day. They have no knowledge of what a scumbag he is on the internet? Huh? He's a father? Calls my wife a fucking whore? Huh? They, that's right. They were, but then they say baseball. No, I really, I really, I'm really jealous. I want to fuck Joey's wife. They all said it tonight. And Frank, that fruit cup, I warned him. You know what? Doom, I respect you. And if you're listening to this, I know your opinion. You don't like it. I don't care if you ever talk to me again. Fucking Frank is the first one I'm tearing up all next week. His sister's got a criminal record. Worse than mine and Chad's combined. I'm not Chad. I'm not going to lie. If they want to show half-truths and make it look like I'm the fucking liar all the time, fuck them. Playtime's over.
Now it's going to get serious. And I might lose a lot of people I, that respect me now. I, I can't. I can't let this go. I will not look myself in the mirror and call myself a man. It can't be done until they're destroyed. They got, they're going to be outlast me. They got no shot. They're boys, inexperienced, and they don't know. They don't know nothing when it comes to warfare. They don't know nothing. They jerk off to each other. Grown men who fantasize because they're jealous because I'm married and I got a great life with my wife. And they sit there and jerk off to me. Grown men. Nothing but lies and conclusions of lie. And I go, oh, Dad, you just you, know, you just don't got no sense of humor. Yeah, it's funny. You know what? Lying about my my uh my 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 uh criminal record. I never denied my criminal record. I was accountable. When you got to take the truth and make it into a lie for a joke, it's not funny, and take it out on a child that's not here to defend herself. You know, and lie about my sons. Let me tell you something. I might be almost 60 years old and maybe out of my depth with a lot of people. But I got heart and I got to fight. That's one thing I, I know how to do. Now, whether, whether I, I don't say, I don't claim to hurt nobody. I don't want to beat nobody up. But I'm not going to let nobody just come and grab me by the throat or, or jump out of a car and, and try to hurt me. I, I mean, if you are at that point in your life or you just don't know how to defend yourself, I can understand. But there ain't nobody going to jump up on me. I don't get paranoid about nothing. I walk by myself. I'm not afraid of nothing. I did this walk and talk stream because people said it would be successful. Lisa and Hawk recognized that, that everything about my fucking walk through is fucking real. All my views are real. I don't sit in the desk. I do it from my phone. I get real live counts. If I got yesterday's show ended with 1474. I didn't even look what it's up to. That was the end. As soon as the show ended, the hour was up. One a couple of days ago, 20, 2,500. It was all legit. Why would I fucking... Why, first of all, YouTube is not stupid. That picks up if anything. You get caught by YouTube. First of all, anything that they think is a troll account or anything they think is a bot, they pull out anyhow and get take it away. And being that they screwed me with this thumbnail bullshit, you know, I'm going to go ahead and screw, I'm going to screw Ty and I'm going to screw what? And then someone wants to make, they want to say that, that I'm a racist and they called and they got, they're having, they're, they called some law firm that I'm racist to Spider and Spider and Spider is mentally challenged. Are they fucking stupid? I treat him better than I treat my own flesh and blood. I never said he was a fucking chimp. I, the joke is he was gonna marry. He's not married a woman. He's marrying a chimp. Gonna go buy a circus, but they got a fucking lie. And I don't give a fuck because you know what? If you did that, you're just hurting Spider because he don't hurt a soul. I protect him, and I would never let nobody fucking get near him and hurt him. And I've never been present. I grew up with in the fucking hood. I don't. I don't care what color, shape, size you are. I don't care because I'm not a racist man. They are. They are so racist. And I don't know who this fucking doodle guy is. I, I, that's not the same doodle that goes to the Shuley's Network who's saying I'm fucking saying this about him. Fuck him, too. That's all I'm going to say. He wants to play with the fucking big boys. And they're, they're threatening him if he, they don't. They, fuck you, man. Be a fucking person. Don't act like a fucking idiot, man. Never fucking talk bad to you or never said a bad thing or disrespect you one time. Don't even know who the fuck you are. Yeah. They're, they're, I'm going around calling him the N-word. First of all, I'm not prejudiced. And here's the thing. I could go in the hood and I call brother the N-word. It's like that. When your homeboy's with him. It's acceptable. You understand? Nobody's going to look at me funny. Okay, you guys just are idiots, bunch of fucking pussies, and I don't care. This is going to cost me a lot of friendship. I can't lay down no more. I can't let nobody fucking lie at me no more. It, it's done. They had their fun for 10 months. They weren't successful. It's my motherfucking turn now. 
I, 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 you know, and that's a right. Thank you, Citizen M. I've never bullshitted you people. I've answered every question. I got nothing to lie about. I didn't go fucking say, oh, that was a mistake, the arrest. Every arrest I got, arrests are one thing. Convictions are another. I'll go back. Let me tell you something. When I, got, when I went to prison, the max they could give me was 270 days. And I'm going to show some of my federal stuff. I was charged with making a false statement, which carried up to five years. The only way you get to five years in prison, if you had a lengthy criminal record. Well, first of all, the only thing they could bring up, because everything was over 30 years old, was those four checks, which didn't, the scoring system, I scored zero to six months. And I got probation because I don't like to, I don't like to be fucking ordered around. And then when the government comes in and the probation officer comes in, they can dictate, they tell you what to do, they tell you when to piss, they tell you when to shit, they tell you when you can shower, they tell you who you can have over at your house. I don't play that shit. It's supposed to be a free country. They don't get to come in and dictate that shit to me. So I violated and went to prison for 27 days because the deal was you then go to prison for 27 days and your probation goes away. I did the smartest. I beat the system and I did the time. You understand? I did the time for one false statement. And they want to think they know the law of structure. What would I have to obstruct the justice? The charge would have been obstruct the justice. You go publicly and look at all my fucking, all my fucking stuff from uh, federal. I don't like to be bossed around. I'm not a guy to put rules on, but I'll obey the laws if I believe in them. I respect not to harm children. I respect to, 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 to help the elderly. I respect you don't go in and turn, and with a, with a shotgun or a gun and put it to someone's head to rob their cash. I don't believe in that shit. Disrespectful. I don't believe in none of that shit. Will I jaywalk across the street and not go to the corner? Yeah, I'll do that. Will I have speed? I got a heavy foot? Yeah, I've had a few speeding tickets in my life. You know? Was I an addict? You're fucking right I was. I'm a con man. I'm conning everybody in the devil. What, would my, what am I conning people out of? If I was this big con man, I would have got thousands of dollars out of everybody and been gone a long time ago. I don't ask you people for nothing. The people that say they, that they're fans and they want to help, I'm grateful. You think it's funny that they fucking hurt someone super, being super chatted? That's a joke. You think it's funny? You think it's funny after as hard as we work to get fucking monetized and YouTube can't give us but a vague answer, a thumbnail? I never met Citizen M. One of the kindest human beings I've ever met. Class, respectful, a talent, don't judge. Even if they know you're wrong, they don't sit there and scream at you. They try to calm you down and show you just it'll be okay. I've never said a bad word about that person. Never will. I wish I wish I really was their friend. I'd be a, a good friend. I really would. I would show them nothing but respect. Mason in Portland, another person I respect like Citizen Anna. Kai Brocaccio is one of the greatest human beings I've ever met. Him and his wife. And why do they fucking dog his wife? Why? Why? What did that woman do? What did my wife do to them? The fact that they just want, they want to fucking sleep with my wife? They couldn't handle it. She's a woman. And she loves one man, that's me. They wish that I die so they can come and take my wife. They want to rape my wife. That's funny. That's funny. If that's humor, please take me out. Please just, just end my life. There's nothing funny about saying you want to rape a child or a kid or a wife. They call my wife the ungodly name. They don't like people that call them out. That's what they don't like. They don't like because I go and I'm asked to go on all the shows. They don't like that. They think they know Shuli. Let me tell you something. Shuli and I are pretty good friends. But they say Shuli just keeps me around so he could use me as a, as a, as a whack packer. Let me tell you something. I promise you, on, on my soul, on, on all your souls, Shuli's a true friend. I promise you that. I've never asked them for money. He's always taking care of me. He's always treating me like a human being. He's called to check up on me if he knew I was sick. 
just been a friend. Bob Levy the same way. Mike Morse the same way. True good people. I got Kevin Brennan for the last month trying to get me on a show four or five times. I declined. And then that, then in that case, said to be a DM. Is this the right email for you? I give him that. So then I'm like, what's your deal? What? Why do you all of a sudden want to bring me back on your show? I don't. I don't. I, he won't answer. So then he gets a two dollar super chat from someone. Said Joey C. Lake. Yeah, like that's gonna fucking have that loser. Mental. That's mental. That's a mental kid. The last night John was talking about me. I just found out. I don't even know what the fuck I did to him. I have no clue what is up his ass. I haven't talked to John. I don't talk to John. He would leave me messages, text me, checking how I was. Sometimes I would respond, I'm thank you for thank you for your concern. And that's as far as it went. I spoke my piece to John. He knows how I feel the way he did my did my did me wrong the way he talked to my wife. And I'm not gonna fall victim to him. I'm not his victim, I'm not his punching bag. But I don't wish the guy to die. I just stay away from the guy. He's got his life, I got mine. I don't, I, and I hear he's sick. He went to the hospital or whatever he tested yesterday. I hope he recovers. Nobody should have to be sick and die at that young age. Okay? He truly even says that. He don't wish no harm on the guy. Here's the difference between me and TSM. They're seasoned pros. They were trained by the best. Howard Stern, they all work. They know how to handle this shit. I'm an average, regular guy like you. That was bombarded by people that I fucking don't even understand what their game is. But they thought I'm, they think, they're they gonna sit there and say, I'm dumb. There's no way someone's helping me. Here, I'm gonna lay something on you guys. And I want every one of you, I'm gonna tell you something. And if I'm lying, I will leave the motherfucking internet, never come back. So I'm gonna tell you that I, I haven't spoken to you. Let me tell you something. I worked for the, I started out as a bad boy at Wrigley Field. I had a kid when I was 17, I had another kid when I was 19, another one 21. My whole family were Chicago police officers. My father, my, 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 my grandfather, my grandmother's brother, four of my cousins. Between the seven of them, 200 years of service for the Chicago Police Department. My dad wasn't a nice guy, he was a corrupt cop. My grandfather was a blessing for the police department. My uncle was a blessing, retired detective. My cousins each have 35 years in. So 35 times four, four cousins. That's, that, that's uh, uh, 140 years for my four cousins. My dad put in 20. My grandfather put 38. My grandmother's brother put in 40. Okay? So my father was never there for me. So when I became 21 years old, he said, you need to stop playing with this baseball shit. You got a family. I said, now you're going to play father and tell me how to raise my family? I like what I do. I let the fucking idiot talk me out of leaving Wrigley Field and give up my job, which within three years, it became one of the highest paying jobs in baseball because the salaries took off and the go-to guy is the clubhouse manager. He's the guy that makes all the money from the player salaries. The Yankee guys, when the salary went crazy, with his Yankee team, he was making a million dollars a year in tips alone. He had so much money stuffed in the mattress. It was unbelievable. And those guys don't quit those jobs. They die in those jobs. You don't pick up a newspaper and see an equipment manager, clubhouse manager in the big leagues. You're never going to see that in that one ad. Those guys start as bat boys, become assistants. They they wait for the guy to die and hope that they're gonna that the owner ain't gonna bring in some nephew that they're gonna be next in line and they stay there as, until the day they can't walk. And the Yankee team is probably the most predominant as far as big salaries. That guy socked away at least a million dollars a year. When he retired, they said he was carrying so much money out all the mattresses and all the couch, everything in the clubhouse that he had stashed. Okay. I knew it was going to be big. I let my idiot father talk me out of going into the family business. That's right. I went to the police academy. That's correct. I didn't like it. I lasted two years. You think I'm fucking lying? You go to the Cook County Sheriff's Office, and you call Human Resources. You call the Merit Board. Find my name. I was Class 87-2. That's right. Two years street cop. That's right. I wasn't corrupt. But I hated the job. I got jammed up one night. Internal Affairs came. Resigned to be prosecuted. End of my career. Went back to baseball. And I went back to I worked in the minor league. That's right. So I'm not dumb. Top of my academy class. That's right. Two years I was a cop. 
That's correct. If you think I'm fucking lying, challenge me on it. I beg you to challenge me on it. They think you're playing with some fucking dumb punk. The six of them, their brain ain't smarter than mine or ever outmaneuver outthink me. I promise you that. I was trained for this my whole life. And if my family were cops, they were gangsters. I had the best of both worlds growing up. I got no reason to lie. No reason to fucking lie. Well, I'll go over to chatting with Stax, and, and, and he interviewed Michael Apple, one of my father's dear friends, who was an outfit guy in Chicago. Go, go tell him Joe Kettle, Joey Catalano said hello to Michael Apple. I'll be, he's, Stax's going to get my phone number. I couldn't believe it. I didn't even know he was still alive. Big time gangster in Chicago. Go, 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 go see if I'm full of shit. Never claim to be a made guy. I claim that I have family members that are. I didn't like that life. I didn't want to be part of that life. I don't want to go out and just, you wind up dead or in prison. I did enough of my own shit to survive that I had a bad temper. I got arrested a lot for battery and bars. Never been to court on most of them. One time, I think I was in court and I was thrown out. Most of the time, I never even got to a court because they, nobody's going to press charges. You get a bar fight, you're drunk. You wake up the next day like, man, you say, I'm not going to court press charges. I'm not going to go fucking be a rat. And then, and then it gets null and process, it's gone. Okay. Yeah, I wrote a few worthless checks in my in Oklahoma. I paid it all fucking back. I got every receipt for that. Okay. I hate insurance companies. I hate banks. Always have. They're scam artists. They scam on people and they hurt fucking people. They're good people, they hurt. They just do. They're they're scum. You think CEOs are straight, see corporations are straight. They're the biggest crook. You think the government's straight? You don't think that everything they took off the street from the mob, they implemented because they wanted it? The pick three, the mob used to have the little truck go around and people used to buy to pick the three numbers. No, they couldn't. They had to tax you. They had to take that, lock those guys up. And they were, they, were, were they any better? They put machines in every grocery store and they sell the same fucking ticket because they control it. When they couldn't control the alcohol, the prohibition came in. When they got control back, it was okay now. They tax it. Now they're. That's the government. But we're the criminals. People like me are the criminals. But you guys vote in all the criminals every day. Facts are facts. The government and prisons and jails, they only put away the mental and the poor. That's all they do like a revolving door. Do you know how many people are in jail because they're homeless, lost a job, some bad thing happened to their family? And they can't help with the way they wound up. But the police, they're just trying to get a warm place to sleep somewhere. And the police will harass them and take them to jail. One guy 37 times in Chicago. For, he was homeless. Something bad tragedy happened to him. He was a good man, good family. And all of a sudden, something bad happened to him. He became mentally insane. And can't take care of himself. So the police, instead of help him, they arrest him 37 times. Because that's what they do. You think you know the law? You call me a scumbag, I know a lot of people. There's a lot of people this day where I guarantee you got criminal records. They're just too afraid to say anything. Okay? There's a lot of you that do drugs and you down it. You shouldn't judge anybody. I don't judge anybody. I don't judge all them fucking punks that are drug and drunk addicts and drug addicts. Why? Because they don't do drugs that I did. I've never done a needle. I never put a needle in my arm. I've never done heroin in my life. Ever. Fentanyl. Ever. That kills people. I got a heart. I didn't smoke pot. I didn't do mushrooms. I didn't do pills. I didn't do, uh, what are they called? What's the, the people get hooked on the streets with, uh, what is it called? The, uh, the pain shit. What is that called? Uh, the fentanyl, so-called that place. What's it? Op opiates, I guess that's what it's called. Opiate addiction. You know, bad opiate addiction. Why is there opiate addiction in the United States? Because the doctors string out people that get in car accidents, string them out, give them, get, get them, give them a couple scripts and then take it away from them. And, and the people go, what do you mean? It's helping me. Now, it's a, it's a class scheduled too good narcotic. I, I, can't, I can't write no more scripts for you. So the people are like, oh, what are you talking about? I need that. You got me hooked on it. So now they go and they score on the street, and then they get busted for buying a pill because they're pain. And they become, then they become in the cycle of being a revolving door. Don't tell me that I'm fucking full of shit. You guys, you guys are not dumb. I, I, the one thing I hate is people trying to act like they're stupid and that they're goody two-shoe. Okay? I'm sure there's a lot of great people, but let me tell you something. There's not as many as they play. 
They're, those guys are all good, but I'm the scumbag. I'm the scumbag because I stuck up for my family and I went to prison for making a false statement for what I believed in. I'm a scumbag because me and millions of other people wrote some bad checks. I didn't go to my neighbors and say, hey, can you cash the five dollars check knowing that he's got to pay his rent? I went to the bank. Banks can afford it. So, yeah, I tried to be correct. Yeah, I knew when I was cashing the check, you know, hopefully they don't put it through. I gambled. I was a gambler. But every time I was called out, I paid it. I went and paid it. So, so the few times I got in trouble with the law for it, I'm a scumbag. Okay, well, I don't give a fuck. If you were bleeding on the street with a car accident, blood pouring out your head, would I be a scumbag if I, if I drove past you and let you bleed out? No, I wouldn't do that. I'd drag you out and get you the proper help, the ambulance, and I would talk to you and keep you calm as I could. The felon, the scumbag. Go ask one of those fucking idiots if they would do that for somebody. Guarantee you they wouldn't. Because they, 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 they said tonight, they hope I die on stream. And you guys think that's funny? Yeah, they're going to be a lot wrong. You know, they're, they're, oh, my God. I live, they, they, they say they take rent in my, they are so green behind the ears. They have no idea what they're getting themselves into. Pretty sick that they can jerk off for four hours and talk about a nobody. And, do, and show you guys the same fucking record over and over. They showed you nothing. I'm rambling on, but we're going to go through all this. I don't give it takes all night. And I don't care, like I said, hate me because it's coming. I'm going to give them every day. Two rights don't make a wrong. Sorry. I got to be that guy. But if I'm lying about that, I didn't go to Police Academy 87 2 for the Cook County Sheriff's Department, call the, call the Cook County Merit Board. You guys are investigative reporters. You guys ought to dig up dirt. Go find it. I want you to find me on all the Merit Board lists. There should be three lists. I was be on the Merit Board for proof of being a correctional officer for the Academy, uh, Deputy Sheriff. When I took my test, my written exam, my scores. My high school diploma should be in my file. Or I'll call the Cook County and we'll go fucking live and I'll fucking call you and give them all my information and they'll say it right over the fucking phone I was a fucking deputy sheriff. So when they think they're smart and they think I'm dumb and people are helping, I, I, I know how to investigate. You understand? I went to the police academy. I know how to conduct an investigation. I know how to find stuff on people. I was trained to do that. You understand? And plus. I grew up in a cop family just because I didn't like it. Don't think that I didn't see what learned from them, how things were done. I wasn't taught. Or my gangster uncles and cousins showed me things I probably shouldn't. They shouldn't have showed me, but I didn't become them because I just didn't see a future. But I sure knew them. I could sure walk down the street, walk in any bar and hang with them. And they knew me. I was always a stand-up guy. Not a rat. Never ratted at anybody. Never been run off. Never been a witness of protection. Accountable for everything I fucking do. But I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with these chat rooms thinking they're going to keep fucking backing me into a wall. Not going to happen no more. I'm telling you, be accountable. Be ready. Be a man. If you got something to say to me, be a man and say it to my face. Don't hide behind a screen. Don't behind a keyboard. Everybody knows where I live. Everybody knows my fucking routine. Come and talk about it. By whether by, I'm not threatening you will harm anybody. If you try to harm me, that's self-defense. But if you want to talk about me to know me and see I'm a pretty good guy and would be a good friend to people, you have that opportunity too. But if you think they're right and I'm wrong, you're in the wrong place then. You don't need to be here. They're telling me how I kicked out. I think everybody's a troll. I don't think everybody's a troll. I know who the trolls are. They act like I'm, par I'm not par paranoid of what? A narcissist, I'm definitely not. Okay? Because I'm accountable for my wrongs. I don't say I'm going to fucking beat up the world. I say I'm not going to back down or show fear. Uh, anybody could whip my ass if they know how to fight. Someone could be always going to be stronger and younger wiser you always never underestimate your opponent but i ain't gonna show them fear i'm not gonna back down even if it kills me i don't care i will fight for my for my right and for my, what i believe in don't mean i'm gonna be able to you know i've had my ass whipped i've been beat up bad i've been in, in fucking hospital 
broken bones, busted heads. Never was afraid or backed down from anybody. I never started a fight with anybody. Believe that, believe it or not. I finished a few. I'm not built like that. I was, I was a small kid that if I let anybody push me around, they would own me. I, my mother instilled me to be a leader and to stand up for everybody. Never let nobody put a hand on you. My mother had to be my mother and my father. And they talk about people's, it's sad, man. It's sad. Think about your mother and your father when you're working, when you're down in Mike Pichetti's mother and calling her all those fucking names. It's not funny. It's not. But I, I, he's pretty sharp. I like the way he handles you. Okay. Chad Zumak, you're going to jump up on the stream and threaten me? Now I got a problem. No, he's got a fucking problem. I've never trashed Chad. I've always respected his craft, always, always stuck up for him. It's not me. All the big super chatters been trying to get Chad and me to get together. They think it'll be priceless. Me and him are driving on a car streaming. Brennan even told him that. So he don't pull the numbers like 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 he thinks. Together, being two crazy guys, kind of with the same past, I think it would be priceless. And this is being asked by Brock Lee guys like that, that want to throw the big money. And he, if he's a businessman, like he says, then he don't want to give up money like that. I just want to get the opportunity. He's the comedian, not me. I, I got to be the straight guy and follow his lead. Okay? I give him that respect. Now he wants to say, I got a problem. Big mistake. Big mistake. I'm not afraid of Chad Zumach either. See, the problem is I'm, he's fucking right down the road, and that's bad. Because if I start getting fucking mine here, I don't give a fuck. What time? I'll knock on his fucking door at 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't give a fuck. He's going to say, we got a problem. Okay, well, he needs to show me the problem then. I don't beg. I don't want him on my. I've never asked him to come on my show once. He's a fucking liar. I don't go around and ask anybody. When Shuli needs me, he's my friend, my true friend. I would never tell him no if he asked me to come on. You guys got Shuli all wrong. That whole group is a wonderful bunch of people, man. But some of these fucking people, you know. You know, Citizen M turned me on to a guy by the name of Red Bar. I think he's phenomenal. I don't. I think the man is a class act, and I, and I, I I heard he was sick. I hope he recovers and he lives a long, productive life. The man tells it like it is. Could shred anybody in the dabble verse like nothing. I like him. I wish I, I wish I had the opportunity to to pick his brain. I, I, I actually watch him. Thank you, Citizen M. <laughs> I don't say much. I, I don't think he does much live shows. It's always they they cut up their their stuff and put it up. But he is unbelievable. The win by two kid, he kind of emulates him, don't he? With the sound effects. I like the win by two guy. I think he's professional. I forgot his name. And, you know, he gave me the benefit of the doubt, you know. And I was, I was mean to him in the beginning. I called him a bunch of names. Poor guy went out, and I guess somebody jumped him, and he got, I don't know what happened to him. I like the guy, but he kind of reminds me, he tries, he's kind of like Red Bar is a genius. I, I pray for that man. Good calls. I know Citizen M is a big Red Bar person. Uh, Citizen Henry has done a lot for Mr. Melton. She knows Mr. Melton's crazy. I mean, they they know. They know he's crazy. Melton ain't right in the mind sometimes, you know. But his comedy is for certain group. He, he's got a, a special type of crowd for his type of comedy. But he's not what he used to be, man. You know, he, he, he's good. He knows how to handle a podcast. I'll give him that. He knows how to, he knows how to go after somebody. The guy's a professional there. His, his time is done, you know. Red Bar is incredible. I, I, I wish I could just intern for that guy. And I would just keep my mouth shut and learn and learn and absorb. I like that guy, Citizen. And Red Bar is top shelf of my book. I don't know if you know him personally, but please tell him Mr. Joey C said hello. And that I think he's a wonderful person. So. If someone, I, I do need some help, and I don't know, like I said, I'm not expecting nothing for free, but my lost interest, Citizen M, I think are the two top clippers, and I think I'm pretty solid with both of them. I, you know, if we could talk, and I, I couldn't pay you a lot of money, but I, I wouldn't want nothing for free, but I need someone to help me put packets together. You know, just maybe, a, a, you know, 15 packets, teach me how to do it, get me ahead for a couple weeks, and, uh, I, I know how to talk on the mic. I know how to be creative. 
these guys think some, who would want to help? Who would I want to help me? I don't need nobody. I don't investigate. These guys under us, they're so out of their depth that, you know, I never thought I would say it, but if I'm lying, I will leave the dabble verse. You guys can, if you're good at investigative reporting, you'll find that I'm telling the truth. 87-2 was my, my academy class. It was top in everything. I was very good at investigating. I came out of the academy and I served warrants. I was a 21-year-old kid out of by my partner. And we used to serve warrants on the south side, go through doors and serve warrants. I've been shot at a few times. I used to be real fast. I could run down, I could run you down. I could chase a guy through an alley and run him down pretty good. I was athletic. It just wasn't for me. I, I didn't, my, my father took that out of me being the way he was. And my grandfather, I've always blamed him for why my grandfather died, who I had nothing but respect for. I couldn't respect my father as a cop. I just couldn't. And uh, let me tell you something about Italian families in New York and Chicago. Everything I'm saying is true. Half of their families are cops and half their families are gang the gangsters' families. They got a lot, half their family are cops or gangsters. Sunday dinner was the, the, how it happened. You were in the grandma's table. You got cops on this side and gangsters on this side. You didn't do that fighting shit you do on the street. The, the ruler's coming out and she's cracking you. Your family at that table. They want to hear about the gangsters up or what were the cops. At that day, you were family. You were cousins. You didn't bring your work to the table. That's what I miss. Miss that the five o'clock Sunday dinner. Okay. I mean, it, it just what's my game to lie to anybody? What, what, what do I get out of it? Why would I want to be a, a, a schmuck? Why would I want to be a schmuck? Why do I just want to talk to talk? Oh, he looks, he, oh, he makes it so believable. I'm not a sociopath liar, they are. They're the ones that think that they're not lying. Everything I tell you, I've done and experienced this. But I laid this on you guys like I laid it to them. If I'm lying, you'll never hear a word out of me again. So if you're going to go say I'm lying, that don't count. Because I promise you, if you dig deep and go to the Cook County Merit Board, 87-2, if you know how to talk to people, you probably can get track me down in my academy class. Probably could. I got some trouble, and uh, I didn't want to do the job. Hated it. I just everything was corrupt. If I was going to be corrupt. I was going to be by myself. I wasn't going to be dragging my family through the mud. You know, I for the most part I tried to be a stand-up, honest person, but uh, unfortunately, I come from a split family of corruption and good. A normal family. Every family's got corruption. Everybody's got a black sheep. You think, if you're going to sit here and tell me you don't, you're lying to yourself. Everybody's got a skeleton in their closet. Everybody's done something they should have done. Every man, every man has had bad relationships with a man or a woman. A woman's had bad relationships with a woman or a man. But we all earn the one thing. We all earn and hope that real love comes in our life. That's what everybody, the end game is for most people. Is that they experience true love. Not a lot of people get to do that. They chase love. A lot of people chase love. I was one of them chasers. Failed, failed, failed. Always wound up. When I finally found it, I finally believed it's real. Not everybody experiences. I was one of the fortunate ones. When the person loves you unconditionally, don't expect nothing in return, and will do anything for you, at, at no matter what it is, without you having to ask, when you're sick, when you're in trouble, they don't run. They don't cuss you. When you have dreams, they don't put you down. They encourage you, even if they think it's a bad idea. A good woman wears on her husband's arm and supports him to be positive. I finally got that in my life. Wish I, I wish I had met my wife 30 years ago. Um, I wish I had all my kids were with her. I don't have no natural. We don't have no biological kids. Still. I had five kids. She had two. She can't have children no more, and I'm quite older than her. I wish I could have a baby with her because it would be a beautiful baby. We're not bad people. If you think during a day that goes by that my wife don't cry herself to sleep, her child that came out of her is gone, 
people fucking talk shit to her and she holds her head up high, it can't happen no more. I'm sorry. We're not built like that. You can't you can't make a mockery out of things that tragedies like that. A lot of people are coming to conclusion. Let's leave the wives and the kids out of it and the people that can't defend themselves that are not here. If you're gonna go that route, it's gonna get ugly. This is going to be a divine, a divine and intervention with a lot of podcasts. The Dabbleverse, I think, is just about at the end. It's going to be a lot of enemies and a lot of fighting going on. I believe it's coming. There's going to be wars. There's, there's going to be wars with, with, with amongst you guys. There's going to be people that are going to be set to one show, and that's going to be their fans. It's going to be like that. It's, it's coming. You can't see that. I'm telling you. But these people that call themselves good people, trolling is one thing. Joking on somebody's another. Breaking chops is another. Good old fashioned. But when you got to get noted by being a scumbag and lie, find me a prostitution charge on my wife's criminal record. Find it. But they call her a whore. Why? Because they can't sleep with her? Because she, she don't roll like that? She's not a whore? She don't just lay down for everybody? Because they, they try to flirt with her and she don't respond because she's a real woman and she's loyal to me. They hate on that. You think Ian Hawk's a man? After what I found out about him, he's a scumbag. He had a lot of balls that I hear. He had the alcohol in him. He had the alcohol, so he runs his fucking little mouth. He's a prejudiced bigot. He was probably abused by his father. Definitely a serious alcoholic in his life. Who thinks it's okay? He was arrested three or four times. That's okay. Because he's a different type of criminal. I'm the worst of the criminal, but he's okay. He, you know, an arrest is an arrest. Lying to your child and your wife that knows nothing about what you do on the internet as a human being to people, torment people, you're a scumbag. You're supposed to get married to honor, love, and cherish, and to have children to, to be the best parent you can. Nobody's perfect. Nobody knows. You could be the best parent, the richest parent, give your kids everything, spoil them, put them to the best school. You think that guarantees they're going to turn out to be be good person? It takes one person to change you, come into your life. One chick that you fucking look at and go, wow. And she's an addict and says, and lays that on you and gets you into the into doing drugs. Because she knows if you got money, that's another mark that she just got. She's going to turn you out. You don't think that happens to good people? Come on, man. Wake up and fucking smell the coffee, man. It takes one bad person to come in your life and say, they prey on you. Oh, you like strip clubs, so they use that. Oh, you like, you're, you're, you're a lawyer with a lot of money or a doctor. You like to party a lot. You think the drug dealers don't smell that out and go to and sell the cocaine to the doctors and the lawyers? You know how many lawyers are coked up in this world? How many doctors operate when they're all coked up? You guys watch reality TV? Where doctors talk about how they, how they're high in surgeries. Come on, man, wake up and stop supporting these morons, man. They're scum. But when it happens, a couple of times, a couple of people got started getting messed with, trolled really bad. They didn't like it, boy. They were really quick to say, "You need to stop using my name, boy." But when it happened to me, they're like, "Grow up, get a life." But when it happened to them, I'm not going to name no names. They didn't like it. They can dox medical records that they had no business. I don't know how they got them. But if I find out their name and put, told their name, I didn't, you know, I'm a jerk off. It's good for them. It's good for me. I don't want to be like that. But to beat these punks, that's the only way you got to fight them back with what they give at you. Except they're making one mistake. They're trying to be funny. They think, they think they're content creators and they're not. Two of them got a page. They're all think they're doctors. They get they they know my whole mental. They 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 they're, they're 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 dissecting me like they know everything about my mental disability or everything about how I tick. They make conclusions of things that how I'm this. Everything everything that comes out of my mouth, no matter what it is, I'm a liar. That's an a fucking possibility. No one, the worst of the worst criminals, couldn't even lie that much. They're not humans. When you call them out, what, I want to go sit there and look at a bunch of screens 
and, and, and tell them they're liars and they're going to say, no, I'm the one liar and they can prove it. Where have they shown one proof? Show me. They talk about they got all this proof, but they don't show nothing. They show you the same fingerprints, the same checks, and they don't show the truth. And I'm a scumbag. I'm a liar. I'm this. I never said I was a preacher. I said I accepted God in my heart and want to change my ways. But people can't let you be, they can't let you mature. They can't let you try to be a good person. They're saying that I'm lying. I still drink Coca-Cola. What the fuck? I would have been dead if I started, if I didn't stop drinking Coca-Cola. I would have been dead. My sugar intake was off the chain. That I only walk around in circles. I'm, I don't, I'm so poor. I can't. I drove to downtown. I drove to two different places and streamed. It's just as easy for me to go down my stairs and do my, 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 I got four routes. I walk an hour to an hour and 40 minutes every day, four, three to four or five miles a day. I take it very serious. I've lost 10 pounds. I've lost legitimately 10 pounds. Oh, it's water weight. They're doctors. It's water weight. That's why. No, I lost 10 pounds, two in the waist. I could wear pants that I couldn't wear last month. Like Bob Levy said, just because you lost 10, don't think it's, you, you get cocky. No, it's, I'm not going to be cocky till I got 30 more off. I'm still not going to be humble to be normal, to not have a belly. They want to make fun of my belly. Okay, that's fine. I don't give a fuck. I go to a bed with a beautiful woman every night who never tells, gives me the best love in the world, never has told me no. If I say, let's have fun tonight, I don't got to ask. Don't even ever. I just got to look at her and say, love you, baby. It is whatever I want. That woman loves me, and I will die for her. That's the relationship I have. That's how good my relationship with my wife. They go around and say, I beat my wife. My wife's a victim. They got all these victims. This is what they're doing. This is their claim to fame. You know, you dox me. So now I'm going to go for the throat. Threatening me. He's going to cut my balls off. I'm done. A young punk that's wet behind the ears. That lives, that's born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Who wound up in the UK. I don't give a fuck. Fuck you, Turbs McGurg. Bring it. Bring your best. Just remember, look me up and see if I'm lying if I wasn't a police officer in academy. Go look and see if I wasn't a deputy sheriff. If I'm fucking lying, you'll never hear a word out of my mouth again. That's going to show you I don't got no reason to fucking lie. I'm pretty smart. I don't need to fuck. I know how to investigate. I know how to do all the stuff, how to find the dirt like they do. You understand? I'm far from stupid. I learned quick. I'm teachable. And for the most part, I would protect anybody that I respect. But I'm a scumbag. I don't care. Call me a scumbag. You wouldn't call me to my face. I promise you. People would never come to my face and tell me that. I promise you on everything at Stanford, there's not one person's devil would come to my face, tell me that to my face. I promise you that. You want to know why? Because they don't know how I'm going to react. I'm not going to sit there and let them do it. And are they willing to take that chance? No. I'm an old man. Of course. I'm an old man who's wise, experienced, and fought since I was nine years old. I've been in more fist fights. I've been stabbed. I've been shot. You understand? Nothing breaks me because I'm a survivor and I'm a winner. People don't like that I got a buck opinions. And, and, then I, and they don't like my lifestyle. Don't listen to me. I don't care. I'll do my stream. No one's going to tell me I can't stream. No one's going to tell me to go away. No one's going to. Let me tell you something. I've had a lot of failed podcasts. I've failed in a lot of angles. I learned a lot of learning, a lot of learning. And when someone, when about six, seven people say a walk and talk stream is going to be inspirational, it took off and it's legit. And they don't like because I walk around. They say that all I do is walk around a circle. They kiss my ass. They threaten they're going to roll up on me. Say, Look how paranoid he is. Look at how crazy he is on the street. Someone says something stupid to me. I'm going to get right in their face. I don't care. I'll walk at three o'clock in the morning down the street. I don't care because I hold my head up high. No one afraid of nobody. When people threaten you that they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna come out and they're going to hurt you, I challenge them. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see if they're, they're men enough to do it. They're not. 
They're not. That's the problem. It's sad. But I'm the scumbag because I stand up for what I believe and I stand up to them. Oh, no, you should never stand up to the trolls. They're geniuses. They got, they're so, they know their way around the internet. They just, they'll eat you up. Well, I'm still waiting. I don't know where they've done anything. I got about 10 DMs tonight from people I never heard. You're embarrassing yourself. You're losing. Losing what? By them telling the same lie over and over? Now I'm extorting them. Yeah, you're right. You're damn right. You got to be honest with PayPal. That's a good way. If you got a legit email on somebody, all you got to do is put in your PayPal. It'll kick all the real information. It's that simple. You can't lie through the security of PayPal. You got to tell them who you are, which means when you put their email in, it's going to come back to their real information. You understand? Shame on them for being stupid. Even Hawk was smart. He said, yep, yeah, I sent him a PayPal. He got it. He's correct. He told his real name, do a background check, match the pictures, match the pedigree. You hear him talking streams. He's born in this month. Oh, same month. Oh, he brags about he grew up in this part of town. Oh, same guy. It's not hard. If you, if you just give a little annuitive. You understand? I came out and never hid nothing. They cry I doxed them. No, they doxed me a hundred times over. And they say people don't like a you're, you're being your stupider level. I'm sorry. I, I I tried to think this through all night. I respect everybody that DM'd me and said, don't be like them. You beat them another way. I can't. If it was done a different way, 10 months of, of, of the way they done it, they deserve everything they get. Their families are going to be very angry with some of them. I don't care. They don't care about my kids. They don't care about my wife. They don't care about my mother. They don't care. Then the Pace Pill's got this fucking theory about my brother. We haven't talked for years. Pace Pill, my brother's the opposite of me. He don't speak. And I'll tell you right now, if you think you're going to troll him like you think you troll me, I would really reconsider that. He's the direct opposite of me. Never been married and don't got children. Very serious individual. I'm very tough individual. I'm very close with everybody in my family. My brother's just a he's just a loner. He don't, you know, when he needs to talk to you, he talks to you. I've been my brother, I took care of him. He was my younger brother. I always protected him. I uh I hurt my brother when I became an addict because he'd never done drugs. He's not a drinker. It, it, I crushed him because I was the guy he looked up with, his protector. And, and, and I shamed him. So for that, I took accountability and I, and I told him I would never, ever let him see me like that. And I was an addict for 30-something years. So many times when he reached out, I just didn't want to embarrass him. And I just let him live his life. But when we needed each other as brothers or something really needed to be done, I was there for him. He was there for me. My sisters are the same way. I've always been a loner. I'm the oldest of the family. My mom, I had so much respect for her. She taught me everything I know, and I don't think I wanted to disrespect my mother. But she said, why don't you come and visit me like you used to? Ma, listen, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm so strung out on drugs. I couldn't embarrass. I don't, wanna, I don't want you to see me like this, Ma. You didn't raise me like that. You need help? Ma, I don't want to quit drugs. My younger years, I told her, Ma, help for what? You got to want to quit. I didn't want to quit. I like the fast-paced life. Okay? I never lied to my mother. Never lied to my brother. Ever. Never lied to my siblings. I just, I've always kept it real. But I, I, I didn't want them to see me like that. So I became a loner. I started my family. My children, when they found out in their 20s, they came to me, Dad, is it true that you've been an addict? I, and I said, who told you that? My son was 22, 23 years old. I said, I'm just curious who told you. He goes, well, Dad, will you answer? Yeah, I'll, I'll answer all your questions. Just tell me, where'd you hear that from? He told me. I go, wow. That's the end game, huh? He goes, is it true? I said, son. I've been an addict for 20-something years, yes. Because I'd never seen a drug in my life. He goes, when? I said, Don, first of all, I never brought it into the home where my children were. I never brought it around your mother. I just wasn't me. Yes, I, was, I, I had a, a dependency on drugs. I mean, I'm going to lie to his face when he knew the facts because the person that told him knew the truth. And it killed me. 
that that person who did that to me, what was I going to tell my son? He's 20 something years old. Lie to him and try to get out of it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't look my kid in the face and lie to him. Not all the values I taught him how to be a stand up person, you know? And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not, a, I'm not the best father in the world, but I wasn't the worst. I comforted my children when they needed comfort. I protected them when they needed protection. I taught them values. I taught them all my sons got great work ethic. I have a daughter that today, oh, he, he, he says he's got a deaf daughter, but, how, but he talked to her on the phone. Are they kidding me? My daughter's never spoke here. Do you understand what TTY machine phone is? It's when they, they type into a thing that goes to a relay operator and the operator's telling me everything she's saying. Are they that stupid? Or my wife, my, my, my daughter, video, they, v, v, it's called V something for the deaf. It's a video relay system where she's signing to a, to a person that's telling me what she's saying. Or they have it where you have the same equipment she's got and you can just talk to her direct. But in jail, they have the old TTY where she's got to type and it goes to, a, to, a, to, a, to an operator. And the operator calls, this is operator 751. Have you ever had, talked to a deaf or hard of hearing person? And the command is, yes, that's my daughter. And you must say, go ahead. That's the word that gives them that they're going to talk. You must say, go ahead. And you got to do everything is verbatim. You can't talk fast. It, it, it goes in, it garbles. So you got to be very slow. Some of them are good at their job. So I'm like, yes, that's my daughter. I understand. Go ahead. And my daughter says, hey, daddy, I love you. How are you doing today? Um, just wanted to call and tell you I love you. Go ahead. And when they, she says, go, when, when her and we're going, then I get to say something. And you got to be calm. So these guys are idiots. I'm going to lie about my child being deaf, profoundly deaf. Never heard of spoke. TTY, I said. I never said a TTY phone. It's what it is for the deaf, a TTY phone. The old style. Now it's the upper stuff is all the be the, the video you talk where you talk to a live operator who's who's very knowledgeable in signing. The deaf person is talking to the to the to the to the to the lady or man that's that's the interpreter, and then um, the interpreter is translated to you. Um, when my daughter talks to like my son, her brother, he's very good at fluent and signing, like, so she could just talk to him. But they don't have that set up like they're supposed they're all they're supposed to be up to date and all that they don't take care of they don't do nothing for the for the handicap they got old-fashioned stuff the tty is ancient it's like the first it's terrible so you, it's it's you got the sir can you repeat that everything's verbatim i, I you know you, you got to talk slower and i'm just talking saying you know and we're having a conversation that's how i communicate with my child but i'm a liar do you see my point what I'm getting at here? How stupid these morons are. They lie and say my brother's name Wayne Catalano and that I don't have a relation with my brother. Wayne Catalano is my cousin who's a very, very successful thoroughbred trainer in Chicago, Arlington Park, Wayne Catalano Stables. Very successful racehorse trainer, family member. Okay? That's one of the reasons why I also gambled on horses as I was a little kid, because my grandfather and my cousin, my grandfather's degenerate horse gambler, and my cousin trained horses. Still does. One of the most successful stables in Chicago. So, I mean, they know my family life. They know that I don't, they, 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 they say, they know that me and my brother don't talk according to them. He's just been coming into my chat lately. I didn't even know my brother watched me. One day he called me on the phone. He says, I'm watching you. He goes, stop fighting with them idiots. He goes, you're better than that. Like, what are you talking about? You watch my show? He goes, every day. I go, why don't you? He goes, I don't go in the chat room. I, you know me. I don't care. I don't want to mingle with nobody. One day he popped in the chat room, and I was, like, all choked up. And, and I was telling him, I said, you know, my brother tell you, I'm not a liar. And he goes, that's for sure. When my brother found out I was an addict, and one day I needed 40 bucks. It was, like, 4 in the morning. And my uncle goes, what, where are you going to get money at 4 o'clock in the morning? I said, I'm going to knock on my brother's door. He said, he'll kill you. He says, what are you going to lie to him about? I go, I'm not going to lie. He goes, you're going to tell him you need it for that? I go, oh, that's the only way I'm going to get it. Knocked on my brother's door. He said, mom better be dead. I go, it's your brother. He goes, I hope you're telling me my mother's dead. 4 o'clock in the morning. He opened the door in a rage. He says, what 
are you, what is, what, tell me something bad happened. I go, yeah, something bad happened. I need 40 bucks. He goes, well, you got 30 seconds to, to tell me the truth. And I said, if I don't get high, it's going to get ugly. He looked at me. He says, you always been true to me. You always never lied. He gave me the 40 bucks. So he goes, don't ever come back again and ask me for money for drugs again. What was I going to do? Tell him I needed diapers for the kitties? I wanted to go buy formula like all these people do, or they take cab rides. They tell the cab driver, oh, I'm going to get diapers from my mother's house in the projects. And the, dry, the cab driver's going, no, you're going to buy crack. But they make up all excuses. What was I going to tell my brother, you knowing I'm a stand-up guy and that I, I, I just don't believe lying to my family? My uncle thought I was nuts. He'll, he's going to kill you. I said, no, he's not, because he knows if I tell the truth, he's, he's going to look at me like I'm nuts, but he's going to know I'm telling the truth. Is there only one answer I could give him at 4 o'clock in the morning? I need that 40 bucks or it's going to get ugly. Don't make me go out and do something stupid. I need that 40 bucks. What do you need it for? To get high. He handed that 40 bucks. He says, well, you didn't lie. Don't come back and ever ask me for money for drugs again. And I never did. That's how real I am. Accountable. Didn't lie. Don't have to lie. I didn't go out and knock people in the head and rob people's purses or do any stupid or rob drug dealers. I didn't go to people's houses and con them. Or, or when they turn around and steal. I didn't do none of that. Paid for all my stuff. Okay? It's not the smartest thing I ever did in my life, but I became chemically dependent. It wasn't that I was even getting high. I depended. My body depended on it. Biggest mistake of my life. It's why I'm tore up today. The doctor always said, we don't know the long term what you've done to your body for 30 years. So time's only going to tell. And it's starting to tell. I had full-blown diverticulitis at the age of 32. One of the, you, you don't get it till you're like 50, men. In your 50s. I had it at 32. I had such a severe case. They took uh, 15 inches of my colon out in 2017. That was a major surgery. They got it all out before it turned cancerous. Uh, that was one of my major operations. I had such a severe case. They had, to, they had to go in. I didn't have a colostomy bag. I turned the operation down twice. I said, I'm not wearing a colostomy bag and going to work in a locker room. Find me a doctor that can do this. They said, there's no guarantee. Everybody's got to wear a colostomy bag. I said, no, I don't believe that. And finally, a doctor that did robotic surgery, the only robotic surgeon in Florida. He goes to me, he says, talking to your gastrologist, and he says that it, it's my gastrologist. I told him, when it's time, I will listen and go for the surgery. He said, you promise me, because he goes, if it perforates and it busts, you'll never make it in the ambulance hospital. You'll bleed out. He came to me. He did the last colonoscopy. He says, if you don't get the operation in the next 30 days, that's going to perforate and you're going to bleed out and die. I go, you told me that if I came to you with that, you would listen. I go, yes. He goes, now, your other thing about you want you want, you want want to guarantee a cause bag is I don't think a doctor will do that. But the robotic surgeon guaranteed, told me he can. Met with the doctor, and I said, you guarantee me? He said, I'm going to tell you what. I'm so good with this. I'm the only robotic surgeon in Florida. I guarantee you, you won't have a colostomy bag. And I also guarantee you, if you go to the bathroom 24 hours after the surgery and you walk to that bathroom, you'll go home that night. And I did. I got up. Couldn't believe how strong of a person I was. I used the bathroom. He looked. He discharged me. I went home. He says, it's going to be rough. It was rough the first year. Your stool was soft for one year. I, I had to go to check, three months check up. Six, uh, but they got it all out before it turned cancer. I listened. That was a life death situation. And I was right. There was a doctor that can guarantee me. I wasn't going to go to a baseball club with a fucking colostomy bag. Sorry, ain't going to happen. I don't need nobody cleaning my shit up. I wanted all the plumbing to be fixed. They did it. He did the surgery with the robotic surgery was so, the, decision, the incisions were so, it was amazing how they did it perfect. He said the whole thing is the first 24 hours after we take out the bad part and how we put you back together and how it's going to reconnect. It reconnects the proper way. I don't have to put a client. If you got problems, then you're going to have to have a client. He told me that. But he goes, I'm pretty sure I'm the best in the business. And I, my words bond. And I, he did. He goes, I'm such a good surgeon that I don't miss. And he was right on the money. After I went to the bathroom, he discharged me. Two days later, I went to the doctor. He checked me out. He says, everything is in place. He goes, How, how's it going? I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm weak. And then I had my gallbladder. My, one day I fell to the ground, my gallbladder almost exploded. So I had that removed. So I went through hell with that surgery. That was a, you know, 
they saved my life. I, I, I probably would have died at 49 with colon cancer if I would have, if I wouldn't have took that serious because it was, it was going to be bad. So they said, it's time we could save this. I was blessed. They got the can before it turned cancerous. I lived. So I've been through hell and back. Okay, people want to joke about my child who had mental illnesses. <laughs> you know what it is when you're looking, staring down a weapon and it's just blood's pouring out like a water fountain out of you? Uh, have you ever seen some of my scars? I don't know if, I, I don't know if you can see that. See that scar? Right here. See that scar right here? That's that knife right here. Right here. Look at those. Look at those fucking scars. Look how deep the fucking scars were. Arteries. I had my fingers in there like to plug the holes up the water fountain. Water was the blood was squirting all over the place. Yep. I didn't cry. I had time to cry. I had to, I had to live. I'm built strong. I could take a licking, and I keep on ticking. My wife, 15 stab wounds, bigger than that, all over her body. So, you know what? Love my child. I'll never turn on my children. I will never throw my kids to the curve, no matter wrong or right. A parent does not do that to their children. I know a lot of my friends that parents disowned them because they were addicts. You can't give up on your kids. Your family. Family's all we got. People, people go bad. They defect. A lot of families got addicts in their family, or a son or a daughter that they have four good kids and three bad kids. It's part of life, man. You know, but you don't turn your back on them. I don't believe in that. Wrong, right. I always told my kids if you get so seriously in trouble with the law, you never can lie to me. If I'm going to try to figure a way to help you, you got to be honest with me all the time. I'm your best friend when it comes. I don't encourage you guys to break any laws, but stuff happens. I'm the first one to understand that. You ever get in a bad situation where something really goes bad, I'm the one you got to tell the truth to because I'm going to look out for the best possible out for you. I'm not going to guarantee that you ain't going to go to prison if it's really serious, but I'm going to give you the best honest option out. My kids and I always had that relationship. They could talk to me about anything. I got that kind of relationship with all my children. I'm their father, but I'm also their best friend. They'll come to me about anything. I'm not going to sit there, call the police on them like some parents do, turn their kids in. I'm not going to do that. I won't. I'd rather take the hit and go to prison for them and let them spare them the pain. That's how I'm built. That's how I'm built. But people that call you out are usually the ones that are hiding something. And I promise you, I promise you, like I said, it's going to be the people's loss that, 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 are, that are not going to try to become a friend with me and get to know me as a person because I'm a good friend. I'm a loyal person to people. I love people. I love to help people. But, you know, a lot of people, are, uh, they like to go with the scumbags. That's your choice. But it's not how I roll. I don't have to be a good podcaster. No one can like me. They can hate me. I don't care. I do this because I enjoy it. Because I got something to say, and I got a lot of stuff to say. I got a million miles of content up here, the things that I experienced and done in life. If I can help people, I'm going to help them. If, I, if a story of mine can intrigue someone to be, inspire somebody, I pray for that. If my stories make people laugh, great. Got people that love baseball, they like the baseball stories. I'm going to tell you the real deal, what I can tell. I'm not going to tell you any deep, deep, intimate stuff players do on the road. I'm not going to go trash a player if he's, you know, a guy that sleeps around with a girl in every city. I'm not going to give you that information. But uh, I'll tell you some of the good stuff. Um, I got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of, a lot of cousins and uncles that are on the wrong side of the fence that uh, were just crazy individuals things they did and the gangsters are unbelievable the things they saw and then i got a lot of cop stories got a lot of those good and bad and then i got a lot of a lot of stuff that i experienced you know everything i applied myself to do i tried to be the best at everybody fails it's how you fail and give up i'm not afraid of failure 
as long as I learn and I'm willing to learn. This ain't easy podcasting. I'm not experienced as a guy that, that a comedian or a person that can uh, put together these packets. That's why I'm learning. But I, I, I think the people that I really want to, to help me with this project would be Citizen M and By Lost Interest. I think, you know, I'm willing to, you know, if I, you know, I'm, I want nothing for free. I'm not asking for a handout. I'm just asking if you could help me, teach me a few things and help me put the packet together for a couple of weeks and teach me how to do it so I can stay ahead of it. I know how to, I, I learned how to present it. I'm, I could do all that. I just don't know how to put all that together. You guys are outstanding clippers. If you're willing to help me, I'm asking for help. And uh, if you can, I understand too. But if you're willing to believe in me, which I know these people do, and they are, they are loyal friends and fans, if you want to help me, I don't want nothing for free. But I just, I'm not, I can't, you know, I can't, I'm not no rich guy, but I will be willing to do whatever you think is, is fair. You know, you, you, you got, you got to put your craft into this and your professionals. So I don't want nothing for nothing. I'm not one of them people, you know, maybe I can trade off something. Maybe I can give you, I can, I could uh, help you in some areas or I could plug you every day or, you know, whatever, you know, come up with some money, give you something if, if you need a few dollars. I mean, I'm, I'm being honest, I couldn't sit there and hire you as a producer, but if you're willing to just help me and teach me for a couple of weeks. I really would be interested in getting the help from Citizen M and My Lost Century, who I think I got a great rapport. I just, uh, I'm sorry I'm built to fight people. I'm sorry. Well, let me go back to this now. All right, so that's uh, A1 Reputable Taxi. They said I lied. There was no, that was my company. I was, at first, I was, uh, I went to a sole proprietorship. When I started the company, I was an LLC. I was, you had to go through the whole nine yards. You got to register your business. I, I had an accountant. I had an EIN number. I started one cab. I went up to six cabs. I was very good at that. I, I had a lot of clients. Um, that, that's not even my, I don't sign like that. And that was proven. Some addict I used to party with, they stole my checkbook. This account was closed. I, did, I, was, I didn't shred the checks. I left them in the cab. They were stolen. Our discount was closed. They were written on account closed. And they, the procedure is when, they, when, when the account closed checks are cashed, most of the businesses will send it to the state's attorney's office. The state's attorney's office don't right away going to say they're going to file charges. But they'll get a hold of the person, especially at the business check, and say, do you know anything about this? Well, like, apparently they sent three or four letters. None of them were answered. And their hands were forced that they had to make me a fugitive of justice because there was a $400 check. They were all on account closed. Another one, A1 reputable. Okay, I, I don't sign nothing like that. I, I could, I could show you, and you could get a handwriting analysis to tell you that's not my signature. But that's my company. That's my name filled out there. And they went and cashed them all over town. And I called up. I told them I'll turn myself in after baseball season. I did. I paid the bond. This one here. Now this one, I deliberately wrote. This was my personal account. I wrote it to Laird, who I wrote the tax collector's office, to renew my tags on my cab. This is when business started going haywire, and I had to keep my cab. There's at least two cabs on the road, so I had to Peter DePaul. Money wasn't coming in, but then I got back right. I paid it. You know, this was part of it. I'm not going to lie and tell you that it was a mistake. I wrote this check deliberately, but I wasn't writing it to a neighbor or a relative. I wrote it to the tax collector's office. I knew if it came back on account closed, that if I didn't go settle up with them right away, it was going to go to the state attorney. I knew this one was. Those other ones, I still was accountable. This one, too. This is one of my transportation Lions Bank. Um, so, and then personal appearance before, and this is just all those stuff. That's, that, those were the actual checks, okay? So there were four checks, like I said, totaled uh, four, three, seven, nine. So it was... Four checks, I think close to 1,400 just in checks, or maybe less. But when the letters were not answered, now that the state's attorney tacked out, uh, there was four checks, so each check became a felony charge. So now because they tried to, to get me to come in to take care of this before criminal charge, once they filed that, now money was added on each of the checks. And you got to reach the check fund or whatever, the bank charges, that's added in there. And you got the court costs. 
all the checks wind up going, I think it was close to a thousand each check after said and done, maybe a little under. Let's see, it was about 1250, 1300, I think, the four check. And I wind up paying close to, I'm going to show you the receipts. Was it, you know, it was about more like 600 by payback plus another fee that wasn't, that was a separate fee that had to go to the state's attorney's office. That was a separate thing. But all said and done, I think it was close to four checks, six, 24, close to 3,000. Now, being I was very, very wild with my money, they said, can you pay this today? No, I can't. How much time do you need? Well, every, I'm going to show you all my court dates. I think I went to court 10 times. Every month that I had to go before the judge, I had to go downstairs before I went to the courtroom and make a payment, show a receipt. That was the deal. In return, the state said, we'll take the four felonies. Each charge is a felony, and I'm going to show you. We're going to convent them to one case and make it a misdemeanor, and we're going to withheld judication, which means I didn't admit to guilt. I was accountable. I paid the checks in full. They're saying I scammed in that. Okay, I'm going to show you the papers where the judge said paid in full. The court said I lived up to my obligation. They honored. They they wanted to back out. Thank God the judge wouldn't let him. The new at the time a new state's attorney was elected. It was during election year, and he was going around to he was new, just got elected. And he was going to all his courts, and he was in my court on my one night and, and one morning on my court case, and he stood up. He says, "No, we're not honoring that deal. I'm sorry." And the judge said, "The hell you're not." It's already written up. He goes, why? What are you talking about? He goes, you just got elected, correct? And I respect that, but you cannot go back on a deal if he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Absolutely not. The judge said, you're going to give him that deal. They, they, the new guy wanted to pull it back. He wanted me to be, well, I'm not letting a felon go. And he says, oh, but you are. You made the deal already. Your office made the deal. This man is a stand-up guy in the community. He does a lot for the senior community. And I don't want him to lose his bonding for his cabs. We're going to honor that as long as he does what he's supposed to. He's been correct every month he comes in here. What he's supposed to do, he does. And he, he said, okay, I didn't know there, there was a written deal. He goes, well, there is, and here it is. And the judge had his court lady or whatever, his secretary, show him. He read it. He goes, okay, I guess uh, you guys do have a commitment. I lived up to my part. The last court date, the judge says, and they amended my felonies and i'm going to show you all that now okay i didn't lie about nothing i didn't say i didn't write them i wrote two two of those checks two of them not my signature it was not me but i was responsible for it because it was my company they had me by the balls they're not going to say okay well do you know who did it i lied i know who did it i told you guys earlier i didn't know who did it. i know who did it i'm not a rat i understand when an addict steals being an addict and i just always hustled and made my money. But I'm not going to turn someone in because they're sick, got a disease. I'll beat their fucking head in, but I'm not going to turn them into cops. Don't worry. I got it back from them 10 times. Trust me. Was someone close to me, someone that I hung out regularly. And, and they were honest. About it. Just tell me, did you write? Yeah, I stole them. Okay. And you owe me. I, I got to go in there and I got to be accountable because it's my name. I did that. I didn't back out and lie. I don't pull a chad. Oh, that was a mistake. I was wrong. Per no. We're going to go through a lot today. I hope you guys are ready, you know, because we're going to go through a lot. So let's get to uh, another document here. So that was the, basically the layout of the four checks. Now I'm going back to this page. I'll show you this page in StreamYard. A lot to cover, a lot of documents. So we're going to open this page up. Now we're back to this where these are all click-ons of the entire case from beginning to end. And I'll scroll down to show you. Starts at the top. We'll go here. And that's all. Case number 13. That was my case. There was four cases 1008. Uh, I, I think in the first page I showed you had all four felonies. Okay, so now we showed that first one. Information filed. I believe. Oh, shit. I got to go back. Oh, wait a second. Sorry. I got all case records. I got to put my name back in. Hang on. I, I, I timed out here. Give me a minute. Samuel, my birth date. And then I'm going to show you that there's a lot of Joe Catalano's on here. Not my birth date. I'm 12 8 Okay? And there's another Joe Catalano that's 86. One's 47. It's not me. 
I'm Joseph Samuel, born in 1965. But they're trying to pin me that I was a fentanyl user. I just got arrested. How do I get arrested when I was in prison for, with the feds? How do I catch a, a, a state charge being in prison? Uh, they're, just, they're just stupid. They make up stuff because they think they're funny, and they lie to you people. They waste your time by having the whole truth. If they've done it right, they would be heroes. I would be okay with it. But they don't show you nothing but the, what they want to show you. Okay? Now, back to StreamYard. We're back to the page here. All the cases. Obtaining property, return check. One, two, three, four, like I said. Each of them at the time, I was charged with four felonies upon the deal that was made. Okay? They said I lying. There's no proof of that. They had the proof. They showed you the real proof. They didn't show you nothing but their version. I'm in the court document. They printed stuff and put up there. They could have, they could have white out and made their own copies. I'm taking you right to the, to the right to the, to the source. I got nothing to hide. First of all, I don't care what you think. I'm a human. Made a lot of mistakes. I don't care. Call me what you want. Call me a thief. I don't care. Okay. Some people in life, they deserve what they get. It's just, it's just the way I feel. So, sorry. I think a lot different because I see a lot more. I understand cor corruption better than you, and, and I understand law enforcement better than you. And uh, I know how both sides of the fence are corrupt. A lot of people don't want to believe that, but I do. It's there. Trust me. All right. So now, uh, this one here, felony out of county. Okay, this was my federal case. My last 26 days, uh, my last two months, I was put in a halfway house. I violated a halfway house rule that was going to put me back in prison, but I only had 26 days left. So the federal, the federal government doesn't have holding, holding facilities. They use county facilities, and they pay subsidized, and they pay good money to, for them to hold their federal prison. Uh, they don't have no buildings. They use county facilities, and they and they pay for everything. Like if you get if you're on a state charge or waiting to charge, you got to pay twenty dollars to when you get arrested, the fee, and you get charged three dollars a day off your comp. So if someone said you hundred dollars a commissary, and you order commissary, they're taking the jail's taking three dollars a day for you towards your meals. They make you pay federal. Everything's paid by the government. So I didn't have to pay none of those fees. I was a federal inmate. So my last they they go well we ain't gonna set it back to prison. Twenty six days left. I broke a rule in the halfway house, and I'm like, I got 26 days left. I, I mean, are you kidding me? You can't in-house be here at the halfway house? And the director lied to me. Turned out he just got indicted. Isn't that funny? I went to him like a gentleman. I said, I got 26 days. You're going to jam me up and put me back in. Like, they sent me to prison. I begged them to put me back in prison. They said, we're not putting you back to, 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 uh, to the camp. I go, don't send me to Pinellas County. This gonna, it was the worst 26 days of my entire sentence. I slept on the floor. It was overcrowded. You got rats running around over you at night. The food was horrendous. You couldn't even serve it to a dog. That's how bad it was. 23 hours lockdown. No yard. They let you go out in the day room for an hour. I got there my first week. I got in a fight with my cellmate. I beat the piss out of my cellie. So they put me in. They moved me to the harder dorm. With, with guys that were facing murder charges and we're all going to get life. I was, I was out on the floor with 10 guys. Nine of them were in there for murder, going to get 30 to life. Then the bed came open in the one cell. Every one of those guys were on a murder charge, um, but they were all innocent. When you get in a fight with another inmate, this punk inmate, he was going to put a charge on me. And, I, and the sheriff came to me. He goes, you're a pretty quiet guy. What happened? I said, listen. This guy won't shut up. He got up in my face. I'm an old guy. He said, threatening me, he's going to kick my ass. I whipped the shit out of him. You put your hands on him? Yep. Well, yeah, he, that's what he's saying. So you're, you're committing that? I go, yeah, but he put his hands on me. He goes, well, that's your out. He's pressing charges on you. My advice to you is when the sergeant comes back here and tells you uh, you're catching a new charge, you're going to go back down and get processed for a new charge. So when you when your federal time's up, you're going to be brought up on state charges and you're probably not going to get out of here. But if you tell the sergeant he hits you and you're going to file a charge against him, the sergeant ain't going to play that. He's going to talk the other guy out. So he came, he goes, well, you're going down to be charged with a battery to 
to an inmate. I said, well, then I'm charging him with it. So he went to the guy and the guy said, what? No. I, so he said, well, if, if you charge him, he's charging you. Do you want to go get a new charge? He goes, no, I'm supposed to be getting out in two weeks. And he goes, well, it's your call. And the guy said, no, I don't want to press charges. So the sergeant came back. He says, well, he's going to drop the charges. I assume that you weren't going to really file charges. I go, if he was, I was. I played that role. I was told by the, by the sheriff to do that. He says, you got 20-something days left. He goes, it, it happened. Get a fight. It happens. The guy was an idiot. He was a nut job. You know? He got mad because he didn't have commissary. And every day I was kind to him. I got I get my comment. I had a hundred dollars sack of commissary. And I give him a candy bar. I give him something. I give him a juice. I always gave him something. I gave him my breakfast every morning because I, I couldn't eat the food. I gave him something off my lunch tray so he could go sell it to another inmate to make uh whatever he whatever he was hustling. He would trade uh the fucking slop for a potato chip or whatever. He just hustled to have little little, you know, foods in his in his in his cell. He was a nut job. And uh he get he he go he goes, Well, you're a lot older, sir. I can respect that. He goes, I'm gonna give you the bottom bunk, I'll go on top because I'm a lot younger. I said, Okay. I said, I'm not asking you for that. I could climb up there. He goes, No, it's a respect thing with me. I go, so I don't owe you nothing. Let's make that clear right now. He threw it in my face. He said, Give me back my bunk. And he went to drag me off the bunk. I beat him to a pulp. I beat him to a pulp. When I got done with him, it wasn't present. He tried to physically drag me off the bed and tell me he wanted his bunk back. I said, listen, we already established this. He got mad because, because that lunch tray, I didn't give him the vegetable. I, I gave it to the guy across the cell because he did me a solid the night before. He let me have a phone call. You know, you get so many minutes that I, I already used my phone call the day. So he goes, I got an extra one you could have. I said, I'll give you my lunch tray tomorrow. He goes, no, nah, just give me the vegetable. I go, nah, I'll give So I walked. He goes, well, you're, that's mine. I go, no, there's nothing promised you. I help you out because you're my cell. I already promised this guy. And he took a swung at me. So I went back in the cell, and he kept running his mouth. I said, listen, I don't know what you think you're talking to. Just don't go there. Just go away. Go cool off. Leave me alone. He goes, I'm going to beat your ass, old man. I go, okay. All right, um, all right, I go talk, talk, talk. He fucking tried to drag me off the bed, and that was it. And he cried so hard that the gate begging the sheriff to come and get him, and he lied so much. And everybody on the deck knew that he fucking started with me. But they got pissed because they shut the phones off. So they got pissed at me. Thanks for fighting. Now we got our privileges to take away. I go, what are you, little bitches? You guys don't fight? Do I go and cry when, when you get privileges taken away from us? It shit happened. So they moved me right away to a holding cell. They came and interviewed me. They go, You're, the guy's pressing charges. Did you hit him? Damn right I hit him in self-defense. He goes, so you're saying he hit you first? Yep. That's not what he's saying. I go, well, how did I get this? How did I get this cash in my chest? He goes, that's a good point. Went back. He goes, you're telling me the truth? The guy said, yeah, he, he hit me. I didn't touch him. He's saying he didn't. I go, okay, well, well he's going to press charges. So the sergeant can come take you down to process. He goes. When you, what do you, he goes, oh, you're a federal inmate. You're not even one of our inmates. So you're not in here for anything. I go, no, I'm, I'm, I'm actually in prison. I got, I got, I violated a rule in the halfway house. They put me here for my last 26 days. You got 26 days left. He goes, I didn't tell you this. A sergeant comes, tell me, press the charges back. And that's what I did. I did exactly what I was told to do. And he dropped the charges and, and I got released on June 23rd. Clear and free. So that's what that, that's what this was. That's what this was about. It wasn't that I committed a new felony. This was my prison sentence. I was released to the halfway house. This is a hold for BOP. That bureau. Here, I'm going to show you. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way. Hang on, baby. I you told me that I left that mouth for you. Are you? No. I didn't touch it, baby. It's there. I promise you. you said you needed it for the, the mail, that stuff, though. I mean, I'm not going to tell you that something's there. Uh, did you put it in right? Excuse me. My wife is trying to send out some mail. I gave her my card with money on it. I mean, baby, I promise you. Hang on. You open my app. Just bear with me. The situation. I gotta, my wife's got to get this stuff out. Keep mailing. Get it all ready. You got the thing that you do it online, and tomorrow we'll, we'll drop it. Pay for it. So hang on. I'll be right back. I just got to show her. All right, be right back. Baby, I'm telling you, my car's done. Huh?
talk about that. All right. Okay. I had to help my wife with something. All right. So where are we at here? So we're going back here. And now, um, yeah, I see I got to move this up. It's so hard to do this. Okay. That, okay. I'm going out of this now. Back to here. Click on this again. Okay. I got to do this all over again. Here, Catalano, Joseph, Samuel. Okay. Take this. Um, da, 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 and then go back to here. Click on that. Uh, here. No, that's not me. That's another Joseph. Yeah, I clicked on the wrong one. Joseph Catalano with the obtaining. See this? And there's a Joseph Catalano 1986. Possession of fentanyl. Synthetic cannabis. Paraphernalia. I'm born in 65. Very common name, possession of methamphetamine, paraphernalia. Different Joe Catalano, but they're trying to attach me. So I'm only 30 something years old when they know I'm almost 60. This is what I'm talking about. They're just randomly going and take anybody at Joe Catalano, they're assuming it's me. I'm going to show you exactly this town stream yard. Okay, so look. You can see clear as day. Joseph Sammy Catalano. All right. And you can see uh, right there. It's not me. I born at 65. So anything that's this year, I'm not 30 something years old. I'm almost 60. That person, same name, is the one with all them terms. But they're trying to say it's me. I'm not born in 86. I was born in 65. Or is that 86? I think it says 86. I mean, it's clearly not me, but they lie and say it is. And that's fair to me. I'm right. No, I went. Uh, my wife was having trouble with my bank card. I had, uh, it's hard to read the three digits on the back. So I had to tell her what the number was. I wasn't going to tell it over the radio so you guys can know my three digit code on my card. She was, you know, she was reading it wrong. She was entering the wrong number. Because we were shipping out some stuff and uh, she had to get to pay the postage. We could go to take it in. We stamp it here at home and got all that stuff that you get. And, and I would take it to the post office. So that's where I went. Like I said, let me go back to this other one now. All right. Uh, this is Joseph Sanger, 86. 86. This is 86. I'm not 30 something years old. This is a person, same name. Now, that's me. That was the hold for Bureau of Prisons. As I showed you, that was my last 26 days of my prison sentence. It says right there, hold Bureau of Prisons. That's Bureau of Prisons Federal. That was just, I finished my sentence in the county jail, 26 days. All this rest is a, is a 1986, not me. But they, they told you guys it was me. But it's clearly not me with an 86 birthday. I've never messed with stuff like that, man. That's not me. I don't, that stuff kills people. I'm against all that stuff. Trust me. I don't like to see people dying for this fentanyl that they're allowing in this country. It's dangerous. Not my cup of tea. I'm an old-fashioned guy, man. I'm a straight shooter. Not, I'm not excusing anything or making excuses for myself, but I do have morals and standards of what I have beliefs. I promise you that. I'm not hip with that heroin and that fentanyl and all that shit. And that's just not me. Something I'm dead against and would not get involved with. I just wouldn't do it. Um, so now we're going back here. Let me go here. I have to go here. I have to put my birth date in. I think that's the problem. Yeah, birth date of birth. I got to put my birth date in. Well, be 65. As you see, I'm going to show you guys. You see. Put in my birth date in, right there, my birth date, 12 65, my name. I'm not going to sit here and, and, and make you think that everything is I'm showing you is legit. So now I go back here, and I hit the little button that says search. And now all my stuff, now we're on the right page. Okay, there's a traffic infraction I had uh, back in uh, 2013. Driver failed to wear a seatbelt. I don't like to wear a seatbelt. I've been pulled over quite a bit of time for not having a seatbelt on. Usually I talk my way out of it, you know. As a cab driver, a seatbelt could be a weapon for the person that's in the back seat. We In Florida, we don't have the, like New York or Chicago, we don't have the glass that separates us. And that glass is only for bullets. They still could stab you through the seat, you know what I'm saying, from the back. So now they put metal, and a lot of cabs have the metal over the seat. Unfortunately, Florida, we don't have that protection. So someone could take that, if you're wearing that seatbelt, come from behind you, grab you, and, and wrap their seatbelt around your neck and strangle you. 
Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weapon for the person that's smart. So I didn't like having that seatbelt on because I always thought like that. All they got to do is wrap that, start choking with that seatbelt. It could be a very big weapon for them. So I don't, I didn't like wearing a seatbelt. Not a smart thing, but if I got in an accident, I would definitely probably die and inject myself through the windshield. But it was a safety thing for me. It was, it was a weapon. They would use it as a weapon. Someone smart that was trying to rob a cab would use that. If they were smart, they would. That's how I would do it. I, that, I would use that as a weapon. I think you got to think sometimes like a criminal, even though, you know, you're not like them, but you got to think like them. If you're going to, if you're going to understand them, I mean, that's a dangerous job, man. So back here, go back here. Here we go. Now I'm going to go here and here we are. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you this. You see here, this is all the stuff. Scroll down. And you see a thing here, it says amended information by the state of Florida. Okay. This was what the state's attorney's office did. And I'm going to show you what it is. I'm going to open it up. Okay. Again, I don't try to say that, that I didn't, this, I didn't get charged with this and it wasn't me. I'm being accountable. I'm just telling you, they're not telling you the whole truth. It's not fair to me anymore. It's not, it's not fair. I don't deserve that, man. I don't. Want to, if you want to expose me, do it right. So here it says hearing. Let me go here. I need to go back up here first. Let me see. Okay, now let me show you this first. This is the original. And this is important. I show you first. So you go here. Open up. How do I open this up again? Here's the little thing. What the hell happened? Guys, tell me how to write a box. Box this up here. Oh, there it is. Right there. All right. So now we open it. You see these. Each, each check, like I said, four cases. Each of them were filed as a felony. I'm in felony court. It's up here, it says felony court. Each check, one, two, three, four, each charge individually as a class felony. Okay? If I didn't do what I was supposed to do, I would have had four felony convictions. I could have done jail time. I could have went to prison for this. But I was a stand-up person in the community. I did have a business. I did service elderly people. I was good at my job and I was accountable regardless. I didn't try to push the blame off. It was my checks. Proved it that the two checks wasn't my signature. They were obviously forged. Still accountable. I still had to pay them. I'm still the response. Here they in Florida, instead of go after the person that did the checks, they go after the person that owns the check. Florida's screwed up with their laws. I'm just as guilty even if I didn't write the check. I wrote two of them. I told you that. Two of them I did purposely. The other two. The, the business checks, just because someone wrote them out and it wasn't me, in Florida, in, in most states will go after the person that did the actual fraud that wrote the checks that stole the checks. Because if I was a rat, I would I could have proved he stole the checks because he told me that I didn't do that. So because it was my account and it was close, being closed was the word, and I didn't shred them. I screwed up. You, you're supposed to sh when you close the account, you're supposed to go to the bank and give them to the shred it. I didn't do none of that. I just. Didn't think it would happen to me. A lot of people weren't that stupid to cross me like that. But it, but I was wrong. Dumb. Dumb decision I made. But I took the rest and I paid back what I was supposed to as agreed. So now we're back to this page. And now, where's that? Pull it up. Okay, here we go. This is the most, I'm going to show you all the receipts showing everything's paid. This is the most important part of what they will not show you because it makes me to be the truthful one and them the liars. And like I said, if you think I'm not serious here and this is a joke to me, nothing I've done that was wrong is a I joke about. Okay, so here, I, you see it says change of plea, right? Now I'm going to go back there. You got all this stuff. These are all the payments. I'll show you that. I'm going to show you the change of plea by the state of Florida. This was because I, I, I did what I was supposed to do, and they put it in writing. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to click the change of plea form. Okay. Now, now here is where they won't let you know this because it's too much to just call me out as a liar. You could verify this. This is a real document. It says in the circuit court of the sick, I got to go back to stream so you guys can see it. I don't Oh, You know what? I never checked to see how you're seeing me on YouTube. Hang on. Let me see. The, I started to do that. Let me see what, how you see me. Hang on. 
let's go because like i said i've had enough it's they're gonna I'm not gonna lie on me anymore. i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna dox myself and i'm gonna go page by page and show you they're liars okay all right so so you guys uh, you guys i still it's hard to see that too i don't know how to draw it in all right hang on just let me go back here. so i'm hoping you you, you can see this is clear because i'm not right okay now here it goes back to stream yard I'm going to open it up and I'm going to see. Okay. Now, here's what it says. This was written by the state. Change of plea form, as you see right there. Why am I hearing myself like an echo? Okay. Okay, hang on. I got to turn off the volume on one of these. I got too many volumes on. There we go. Back to stream here. Okay. It was like an echo. All right. In the circuit court is a sixth judicial circuit of florida in and for pinellas county criminal division that's the case number one three which is the when i turned myself in 1008 cfano okay a count of one okay up to okay, together i gotta look at the page because i can't see i'm gonna read it off what i got here and you guys and i'll and i'll, and I'll, and I'll do the scroll thing but i gotta look at it Was, this was the deal they made if I lived up to being an honorable guy. Base pill those guys won't show you these documents because it makes me be a truthful person. And they rather call me a liar because that's the types they are. So I got no reason to lie. Even Ray said, I'm accountable. When I'm wrong, I'm wrong. This is what they showed you four times. They showed you guys this. My fingerprints. Yeah, you get fingerprints. Yeah, that's what that's part of the process. Okay. This is what the receipts I'm going to show you from their website. If you see each check, 570 was paid for each check. And this is an official receipt from the Kemberg Clerk of the Circuit Courts, um, cash tenant, official receipt. And I'll show you in, from, on their page in their website where it says uh, obligation fulfilled, which shows a zero balance. But I'm going to show you. I printed these, but I'm not going to do. I'm going to give you to show you the real stuff. Let me just this page I got up. I got to find here so I can read it, and I'll do it. Find it. Add it. There it is. Right. Okay. These are the amendment charges. As long as I did what I what I was told, what I agreed to do. All right. So here. As we're going to follow this, I'm going to read. Okay. This is four times they showed the same thing, and the, and I told them, why don't you show the whole thing? So here it says one three one one zero eight C F A O N. Four counts of one misdemeanor. Four count four. That's a four counts of one M M is misdemeanor. Okay, obtained property. Um, worthless checks so they took the four felonies like they promised i did everything i was supposed to do and paid it in full and made it to four counts and made it to a misdemeanor all right and they withheld my adjudication look up what that means it means i didn't plead guilty as long as i did what the agreement was so i wouldn't lose my bonding the felonies were dropped they kept their word, and I was charged to, to a misdemeanor. They reduced it to a misdemeanor, which is still a crime, but I wasn't convicted of four felonies. Okay, so now, and they it's all written out: uh, four counts, two. It says four counts felonies, two misdemeanors, which is what it says: four counts, two misdemeanors, obtaining property, check worth this check. That's the deal. They promised me they would take the four felonies. And make it to a misdemeanor. They made it one case. And that's where it came. Why they only wrote one case number here. Now, in the beginning, the very first page had all four of them. They were all thirteen one one, ten oh eight. I think ten ten or whatever. C F A O N. And it was only one charge. Dropped the misdemeanor, and it withheld adjudication. Which I'm going to show you that. So let's see here. Go here, and I'm going to pull this up, and you can see. This is just what they wrote out. It's the deal they gave me. Here it is here. 
time served one day. I'm going to pull this up on StreamYard. The file September 3rd. That was the last court date. You see one case number. No more four case numbers. That was the deal I made. So I'm going to show you. Here it says, it's very hard. Well, one today served um, 500, I think it says 500 cost and paid restitution fees paid. Restitution, everything paid, released in full. This $247, I had no knowledge over the 11 years why it's there. I still don't know. So they're like, you, go, you don't even pay back the court. Pay back. I was released. Everything paid in full. I'm going to show you each of the. I couldn't get the case to what they offered me if I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Do you people understand how the law works? They lie. I'm sitting here showing you the real documents, docking myself, being accountable, and showing you how four times they demonstrated this. The same documents that won't show you the truth. Again. They're the trolls that nobody knows who they are. They're the little boys, and they don't get to lie on me no more. It's not happening. I won't allow it no more. Um, here it is. I agree the rest of the amount of is dollars. No amount there. It's just paid in the amount of restitution if he's not decided. Okay, everything paid. 12 years of school. I graduated high school. It shows that I graduated. You know, they ask you one of the questions, well, how hard, far did you go? 12th grade, graduated. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the court documents, and I'm going to show you what they call, uh, let's see, I think these are, the, 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 just make sure these are the actual checks paid, the receipts. No, that's each court date. That was each court date. I'm gonna, I could just show you a different way. These are all the court dates, so I'm going to go back to StreamYard, and you can see, I think I went to 10 months. You'll see every month there was a new date. Those are all court dates. That's just, the, that's just the letter they send you to the house to let you know where a proper attire, uh, your court dates on this day before the Honorable Judge. So I think how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, pre-trial, ten. It almost went a year. Almost went a year. Um, I filed indigent. I filed for I couldn't afford an attorney. Um, and I need the time to pay it back. If they gave me the time, I would honor it. And I did. So now let's go back to this. And then, yeah, I went and see count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten months. And yeah, I went ten months. Uh, ten, there's two, two in the court dates in September of 14. And the final court date was judgment for attorney, not index. So I guess there was a, when you get appointed a court attorney, apparently this wasn't in the fees because I was released and everybody paid. Now I see, now I understand, but I'm going to still call them out on that because I was indigent. I guess this, I guess I had, to, this is what this is, $50 attorney cost, cost of defense. So they're telling me I had to pay the court appointed lawyer 50 bucks for each charge. So that would explain 200 of the 247, which I don't know. I was indigent. I wasn't supposed to have these weren't supposed to be. They weren't part of the court cost. Didn't when they went up, when I paid at the window every month, this wasn't in there. So, uh, so this will be easy. I wanted to, when I go and show them my, uh, the paper signed by the judge, this will go away. I don't owe this money. I paid everything. I didn't think I owed anything, man. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have got the deal I did if I owed anything. That That's what's pissing me off is why lie? Why do they got a lie? What are they getting out of it? I call me out and say I'm a scumbag when they're really the ones. Disposition. Let me see what this is. Is this the receipts? Uh, okay, here it is. Now, this is a very important piece of paper here. Now, look up order withholding adjudication of guilt. Does anybody know what that means? Do you understand what that means? They withheld adjudication. I didn't enter a guilty plea because I wasn't guilty because they struck a deal. You're going to pay back and be accountable or withhold adjudication, which means I didn't plead guilty and I didn't plead innocent. It was withheld adjudication, which is nobody's supposed to see these documents anyhow. You understand? I, I wasn't found guilty or not guilty. They withheld adjudication. That's a break the judges will do when, they, when the states makes a deal with you and you do your part. They, this is part of what they have to do for you. 
The judge says, I will withhold adjudication. He could have said, I'm not withholding adjudication. You're putting a guilty plea in. He didn't do that for me because I did what I was supposed to. I was accountable. I came in, I turned myself in. They didn't have to come break my door down. I bailed myself out. I did everything I said that I told them I can do. <clears throat> if they work with me, this is how best I could do. The judge says, if you live to what you're saying, every month before you hit this courtroom, you come with a receipt. That's what I did. That's what I did the best I could. It took me 10 months. I paid everything back. So I was relieved of that. Account. So they, they said I was found guilty. They lied to you again about that. And this is just the 13 case. Now, I wasn't arrested again till. The last time before that, I was arrested in 2001. There was a battery. It was dropped. Never been to the court. And then in Chicago, I got arrested at 89. I went to Academy 87-2, got in trouble. I was told you know, I had to resign. I wouldn't be prosecuted for what I got in trouble for. And now I was depressed, and I was on cocaine, and I got caught two weeks after I resigned from the sheriff's department. Driving, still had a pistol in my hip. and. Uh, I already turned my badges, so I didn't really have a license to carry a gun, and I had a half gram of cocaine in my pocket. In the 80s, going to the 90s, in, in the Chicago law, if you got caught with any amount of cocaine with a weapon next to it, they construed that as armed violence, meaning that they, weren't gonna, they were going to try to convict you as a, as, a, as a guy selling and that you had a gun to protect in case people tried to knock off a drug. So basically they were saying you're, you're a dealer, you're carrying a gun, and you're willing to commit armed violence. No, I was a user that kept the 20, I had a kept, I kept the 25 in my, my boot, but this one I had in my hip, I had a little 25, and I always carried a backup gun. I had that a little 22. And just because I didn't, I, you know, I resigned, I was trained to carry a gun, and I always carried the gun. I did until that night. And when it came with the armed violence, and I hired, I, I had a paid lawyer, paid a lot of money for my lawyer. I said, what is this bullshit? He goes, well, the armed violence law is, Mandatory six to thirty years. Don't, it's not a probationable offense. If you're convicted, you get six to thirty years. He goes, it's a way they're cleaning up all the drugs off the streets. It, it was the Reagan administration, I think, back in those days, when he was the one allowing the stuff to come on, but he's trying to fight justice for drugs. And let's take it a step further. The cop that pulled me over, Chicago Patrolman. I was two blocks from my house. I was a wreck, man. I lost my job. I, 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 I was. Not in a good place. I one, I never was irresponsible to get high and dry. I was fucked up. I came, I was so high, and I made it to two blocks from my house, and my tag was expired. I mean, I lost my job. Everything fell apart. It was all because of my stupidness. You know, I was a good. I if I would have if I would applied myself, I'd have been a great cop. I'd had a great career. I was good at it, but I just it wasn't for me. I just just. My dad put a bad taste in my mouth. Well, it turns out a guy that had a big beef with my father, one of my, his old partners, pulled me over, asked me for a license. He saw the gun, and I got out. He goes, is that a gun? I go, yeah. He goes, he put his gun on me, took the gun. He goes, and that cocaine in your front pocket. Took my license. He goes, um, he goes, did I just hit the lottery? I go, what do you mean? He goes, Joseph Catalano. You're not related to Joe Catalano, the, the, the copper in 19. I go, yeah, it's my father. He goes, oh, my God, life is good to me. I said, what does that mean? And he's going on. He's talking shit. I go, well, you know, I don't, he ain't my favorite person in the world either. Well, no, but your beef with him is with him. What do you take it out of me for? He goes, he's such a jag off your father. He paraded me around the police station. Guess whose kid this is? Jag off Catalano's kid. It's everywhere. Every department, he drug me around. How he busted so oh, I, call, I got, got my phone call, and I called the piece of shit. I said, well, I just got pinched, and it's got your name written all over it. He goes, what's the copper's name? And I told him, that's my ex-partner. I go, yeah, well, he's booking me because of you. Thanks. You know, if, 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 they, if, they, if I wasn't your son, a lot of Chicago cops are pretty fair. They, would, they, they give you a break. They'll take your gun, especially if you're an addict, take your drugs and kick you, and kick you in the head and let you go. Because of my last name, he couldn't let it go. So my dad came down to the station, I guess, and he was, he was, uh, he wasn't even supposed to be in Chicago. The deal he made was he resigned, took his three-quarter pension. He happened to be, I don't know what he came back to town for, but I knew he was here. He was staying, he was staying out by the airport. He was staying at uh, a condo that he, that he, that he had in front of his. 
And I said, thanks a lot. He came down the station and, and tried to, and he goes, don't take it out on the kid. You want a piece of me. And it didn't work. I'm like, don't make it worse for me. So I went and I got processed in and I was charged, officially charged with armed violence and a half grand. So the lawyer says, listen, you paid me $10,000. Normally I, I could say I beat this. He goes, but they're not, because of the situation, you're going to have to take the dope pen. That goes to half a gram of coke. He goes, you file guilty to the cocaine charge, take six months house arrest, and a year of probation, they'll drop the armed violence. Best deal you're going to get. Okay. Paid you $10,000, and I still got to get convicted. That was my very first conviction. Never got in trouble again. 2001, I got arrested for a couple batteries. Never went to, never went to court. There were no, one process, no one would go, go against me and testify against me. Those were dropped. And then I got in trouble in 13 with those checks. And then in 19 with the federal. That's it. I don't have this big criminal arrest. I've been arrested 87 times. Been arrested one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times in my life I've been arrested. And one, two, three, three of them, four of them were tossed, convicted on the dope, convicted on the checks, dropped the misdemeanors, and then the felony prison for the lying to the federal agents. That's it. I'm such a hardened criminal that they make me out to be. I had a lot of checks that I did bounce in other states so that when I was in federal prison, I got called into the, the lieutenant's office. He says, uh, your release date is when? When you go to halfway house? I go April, I think, or May or something. He goes, well, they just took it away from you. Uh, you apparently got warrants in Oklahoma for outstanding checks. So I, I, he goes, here's the number. You know, you, you, they gave you free phone with the pandemic. You got a, a so 300, 500 minutes a month uh, free. You just had a calling card and you can go to the phone. So he gave me the number. I called the Oklahoma and they're saying, yeah, you got a warrant for 20, from 20 years ago. I said, are you kidding me? How much is a check? $44, one for $22. I said, I said, well, how much does it pay? He goes, well, that was 20 years ago. So each check is about $800. I go, the 44, he goes, yeah, I think it's, a, the one was a 1,068 after 20 years, and the warrant was still there. So I said, well, how does this work? He said, well, you're not, you lose all your privileges. We can't hold you past your, your sentencing date, but I can't tell you that they won't be waiting for you to extradite you. He goes, these are misdemeanors, so I doubt anybody's going to be here. So you'll probably, when you get released, you're going to, you know, if you don't go in that state, you, you know, you, but here's the deal. If you want to go to the halfway house and get early release, you got to pay it back. And that's where my cousin, and I called her, and he paid everything back. And I got, and I made it, and I, and I got to go to halfway house, which I still got viol knocked anyhow and went back to jail anyhow. So I should have just stayed in the, the freaking camp and just waited to June 23rd, and I wouldn't have had to pay none of them checks for 20 years. And yeah, I'm a scumbag. Screw them. 20 years for a $44 check. They hold a warrant in a small town in Oklahoma. Are you kidding me? Come on. Ridiculous. But I paid it. I had paid two checks, one for $22.44, and it cost me like $1,700 for two checks with all their fines for 20 years and bonds and all that shit yeah so yeah yeah so yeah you play you pay you break the law i'm not telling you i didn't break the law i just thought i was at times i was above the law and i could get away with shit but you know what i never got away with nothing because it all caught up to me anyhow when i thought i had to check a couple checks were in oklahoma they were so small but look what it did to me it, 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 i had to pay it all back and and and, and they had warrants for me. so you never win when you're a criminal. That's my whole point. I did it to myself. That's why I tell you I'm my own worst nightmare. Made my share of mistakes. Don't make me a bad person. You know, when people call me out, I got to question their, their hiding something. I promise you. And you know, a lot of people know I'm, what I'm talking. I, I can see a lot of people right now cringing, saying, yeah, man, I got a past, man. I'd never talk about my past. Yeah, you probably wouldn't. Yeah, I'm in the zone tonight. Hard copy, Donkey Kong. Thing. I listen, man. My reputation means so much to me. I hate being called a liar when I'm not. I just trump them with the truth. They had all the same truth. They could have, they could have did all this, and still told the right results. I'd have been okay with that. I would have gave those guys their respect. But they didn't want to do that. They wanted to take the truth. It was easier for them to make me the bad guy. When they're the scumbags. Ray DeVito said it. Uh, Bob Levy said it. A lot of the big people said, it. there's no lying in me. You can look in my eyes and see. I'm not a guy that lies, man. 
I am the most truthful guy in the dabble verse. I promise you from day one. But they say he's a liar. I'm showing you the court document. They could have done this. They could have been the right kind of guys and still exposed me and had their fun. But they lied. They didn't let you know. They said, I lied. They said they were so adamant last night how they got me again. They proved that I'm nothing but a liar. That was that what they bragged about for four hours while we were there high and drunk. And I said to myself, and they're calling me a coward for not. I'm going to talk to them and give them to get more airtime. That's all they wanted. That's all they wanted. They four hours showing you a bunch of garbage. But they had the same truth. But it was easier for them to make me look out that I'm some hard criminal. They didn't show you that. I, with so Look it up. Ordered, withhold adjudication. You look it up for yourself and see what that means. I'm not lying. They said I didn't pay nothing back. I was convicted of forfeit. No, I was not. I showed you the, the amendment court record, change of plea form. I kept my end. They kept their end. They lied about that. This is just the checks. I'm going to show you one more thing, and I'm going to continue this tomorrow. We're going to go to a, I'm going to show you everything from A to Z. I got nothing to hide. I'm going to show you the way they're showing it. They're making me out to be this big, hard criminal, and I'm nothing but a lie. Everything on them out is a lie. Again, if you know me, you can see in my eyes, I speak nothing but the truth. I don't lie. I lied to the federal government for a reason to protect my family. I don't go around and talk about their little kid or their grandbabies. I'm going to hurt them. I don't believe in that stuff, but they do. They've crossed so many lines, and they tell you, I'm the liar. They're, I'm lying. I struck Dabble story. I admitted that. They're, now, if you listen to baseball last night, I'm pretty convinced, Joey C. Who else would strike OJ? Did you hear? They went from guaranteeing they had the proof to that, in their belief, I'm the one that struck OJ. You see how they lie? When they, when, when they tell you they had the proof, but they never show you, and I call them out on it, well, their opinion, I, I, who else could have done it? It wasn't them. Fucking guarantee it was one of them to frame me. I promise you. That's how scummy they are. We wouldn't do it. We're content creators. No, you're not. You guys are not content creators. You're thieves. And you try to ride my coattail to get a name. That's all they do. The more I talk about them, the more they get the acknowledgement. That's how they feed. They said it. If you pay attention to the four hours, they contradicted themselves so much and lied so much. Dabba Storian has never told the truth about anything. Every turn that I beat that guy down, he comes back and now he's saying I'm extorting them. I sent three requests from paypal because that's how i got the real information curved for five hundred dollars he goes oh, oh since now is this hush money that you're you're demanding hush money i go does that say what it says on there it says pay the toll troll it was just busting their balls like they bust me you know they're twisted it said that i'm trying to blackmail them you know what i wouldn't waste my time they're scumbags but they have to make a name for themselves by making me out it's too easy Look at all the lies. You think we're going to believe he didn't do OJ? OJ's been nothing but a friend from day one to me. OJ sent me a message. I'm going to choose to believe you. Because he knows in his heart I would never do that. That historian doxed my wife's entire medical history. Got what he fucking deserved. He violated privacy laws. And they, I didn't strike his channel. I struck that video to be either he takes that shit out or take the, they took the video down. He deserved it and lied to your face. He lies every day. They go in and they try to be that. I warned this milky guy. They ain't your fucking Fred, dude. When they get a chance to porn bomb you, they're going to take your channel apart. That's what they do. That's their end game. They like to make people lose money. They like people to lose channels. They're liars. They're scum. They have families. They talk about hurting babies. They call women whores. They have no respect. There's not one thing they've done on a video that was truthful. I promise you, Dabble Story lies that I'm obsessed with him. I'm gay for him. Oh, no, no. You go watch. Go to his page. You tell me who's obsessed. Go see if anything he created is original. It's, go look at his shorts. 
they're all about me. The guy, the guy sent me his cock pictures. Well, you sent them to Shuli. No, I sent them to Shuli because someone trolling me said they were the Shuli Network and they wanted a naked picture of my wife, so I sent that. That's a big difference than just some man sending another man cock pictures. He thought there was nothing wrong with that. I didn't do that. He said, that's how you got famous. No. I was in a big war with Shuli, and I so here's a present for each of you guys. I really thought I was being, that Joe, the producer, was coming at me. And Shuli tried to explain it. Do you know what a troll is? I go, what are you talking about? They're saying it's Joe and the TSN network. He goes, I promise you I wouldn't put up with that. I didn't believe him. I fought back for Shuli for two months. Finally, uh, I understood, and I went and made a big apology. I'm sorry I accused you. Joe and I weren't friends. Joe made sure, Joe did every turn he can to keep me blocked in that chat room. And finally, when, when I apologized to Shuli, he, he made Joe unblock me. And Joe says, oh, I, I can't find where he's at. He's hidden. When I, I said, he's fucking with you. He's lying. And Joe told me, don't think you, and, and, and I, I, I went to Joe like a man. I said, Joe, I'm sorry I ever said anything bad about you. I, I, I go, believe me, I really thought it was you. I go, I don't know you guys. I didn't know you, Joe. I, I didn't know what a troll was. I really believed that these people were terrorized me. They were the TN, and I had to give my wife's naked picture. I was gullible. I didn't know what a fucking troll was. I didn't have no idea what these people were capable of doing. I learned hard the fast way. But I promise you, I was very naive. And I really believed that when they said they were Joe and the TSN network, I thought it was them, and it wasn't. And when I finally realized that they were telling me the truth, I was a man and went to them and begged for forgiveness. And, and they treated me and accepted me like I was a family member, and I love those guys. Because they knew that I'm a decent guy. Surely says it all the time. You got to love him. He, he, he's just the guy. How can you not love me? People say, oh, Shuli don't like you. He's just making a clown out of you. I'm going to tell you what. Shuli does care. I don't even. I, I mean, let me tell you something. Shuli is so solid. He's just. It, it's none of nobody's business. But Shuli is a good friend. A true friend. He really is. And Bob Levy is a good friend. These guys are care. They call me. They check up on me. They give me great advice. They tell me, hey, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna bust your chops. Here, I'm going to throw you 200 bucks. Go with it. Okay. People say, oh, you're just a whack packer. No, Shuli's my friend. Promise you that. Stand up, guys. And no one's going to change that. And no one's going to take that. They're like, Shuli, he must lie to Shuli every day. To, that's why Shuli believes him. He's got to be telling Shuli. I promise you. And everything I stand for, fucking Frank, his sister that he lives with, she takes care of him, has got a longer criminal record than me and Chad put together. Now, if I go ahead and do that, his sister has nothing to do with that. She's going to hate him and throw him out. And I hope he loses his job. I don't give a shit. They don't care about my little grandbabies. They don't care about doing terrorizing my wife and lying. So why should I care for them? They attack my family. I'm going to attack them. People are sending messages. I, we don't like doxing. I don't give a fuck. Live with it. Because what they do to me, I'm going to do tenfold to them. Except I'm the one telling the truth and they're not. And if I lose everybody's respect, oh well. Oh well. I'm sorry. You'll, you'll come to realize I'm the most stand-up guy and I'm 100% right. They took it to this level. They're the ones that have been trolling and trying to make me have a heart. They, they pray every day that I die on live stream. They can't wait. They can't wait till I die so they can come fuck my wife. Class act. That's what they say. These are things they say to me every day. I'm telling you facts. And, and I got no reason to lie. And I should put up with that? No, I shouldn't. No human being should have to go through this, man. It's not fair. Regardless if someone has made mistakes in their life, we're still all human beings. You cannot tell me you're a human being when you can do these things and have a family and don't even blink an eye. I don't care. I'm sorry. I, I, I made one mistake is I put my poor wife through hell because it gets crazy, you know, and she knows that I just won't give up on this. And, and I don't want to make my wife upset, but my wife support, you know, even though she get, she, she's just thinks it, it's got to stop. She's right. But I can't lay down on them. I won't. I, I'm not built like that. I'm sorry. And if it's going to cost me where people are going to re not respect me because I'm being just as bad as them by doxing, I'm sorry. 
It's necessary. The only way you're going to beat them is to humiliate them. They don't have the backbone to take it. I promise you that. And they're going to get a lot of family members pissed off because I'm going to rip their whole fucking families apart. I guarantee you that. And I've been warned by a couple of people that really love me. Don't be like that. We want to do it to John, but we just don't believe in it. I'm sorry. They ain't doing to you what they're doing to me. So I'm telling you guys up front like a man, it's going to get ugly. And if you got a, if you got a, a, a passion about it and you think it's a bonehead move, I apologize to you now. But just know it's necessary. They forced the hand. I'm not a snitch. I don't believe in doing that shit. I don't believe in going after family. Man. I don't believe in that. They leave me no out. To crush them, I got to be them. Sorry. It's, it's called for it. So I'm going to let you people know now. So when you see stuff that is going to piss you off and you don't want to speak to me or you're still, still, I'm an idiot, that's fine. You're entitled to that. I'm apologizing to each and every one of you now. When this is all over, you'll see that I fought for a cause, just not for me and my family, for everybody that they might terrorize in the future. If it don't get stopped now, they're just going to go on and on and on and keep hurting people. And I'm just not built like that. I'm not a liar. I don't got no reason to lie. They do. So I'm going to show you one more thing and I'm going to wrap it up, man. I just, I just, my wife said, well, you don't have to, you don't owe nobody nothing. You're right. I don't, I don't owe nobody nothing. So, you know, you know, they're liars. They're going to keep lying and they're going to tweak this out. And they're going to tell you guys, they're going to convince 90% of you I'm lying still. Well, you guys could access these records too. It's all public knowledge. Pinellas County, clerk of the courts, type in my name, my birth date, and you'll get all this to see that I'm not lying. The part about me being in the academy, if I'm lying, they'll never hear a word out of my mouth. That's going to show them. I'm dumb? <laughs> no, maybe you guys are just been played. I got a lot of trump cards. that you, I haven't told you guys half of what I know or what I've done. I'm below a lot of people's mind when I told them I was a cop for two years, huh? Yeah, well, go look it up for yourself. I gave you the tools. I told you where to go. If you got any skills to investigate, you'll see that I'm telling the truth. And I'm going to call myself, and I'm going to have them mail me all my stuff from, uh, from the merit board. and to call human services tomorrow at the sheriff's department because it's me and they'll ask me some pertinent information and i'm going to have them send everything that's in my file even if i got to pay for it i'm a, i got nothing to hide but call me a dumbass like they think i'm dumb and there's no way i'm that smart <laughs> i play dumb really good that's a tool they teach you in the police academy how to be undercover how to play any role you can play i'm very good at it very good at it and that's where they're cocky and underestimate this opponent. And I'm telling you guys, I have, I've been honest with you. I've said, if you believe in me, stick with me because I'm going to be so real and be so right by you people. And if you don't, I'm not going to be mad. I'm not going to hate on you. It's your opinion, your choice. But I'm not, it stops. I cannot allow them to keep lying on me. I've took enough, 10 months. Now I'm going to flip the script. Everything they've said, I'm going to show you where they lied. Because I have all the documentation of everything they do on me. And they have the truth in front of me and I still lie. They make me out that I'm no good. I'm not human. I don't change. I'm lying about that I, don't, I still drink Coca-Cola. I don't really walk. I walk in the park. They're insanely nuts. It's another uh, psychology in the police academy is big. And they are candidates for being sociopath liars like the plague. I could break them down so good. I think just, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I'm starting to enjoy this. And, and that's where I got in trouble because you were enjoying this, aren't you? I really am. To make them live in misery makes me a happy guy. I'll sleep better at night. I promise you. And that's cruel, I guess. But you don't know half what they do to me. Believe it or not, I think I've showed you again I'm not the liar. Take it for what it's worth. It doesn't matter. You guys are going to hate me more and more because I'm going to be as deviant as they are. All right, let's see disposition. I think this is the last thing I want to show. Not the same thing. And this is just the checks. Uh, I want to show you some of the, no, that's the court case. Where's the, 
receipts are in here. I think these are the receipts. Let's see. Are these the receipts? What does this say? Notice intention to claim alibi. Uh, demand for notice of intent to claim alibi. That's a standard thing when you're a lawyer, defense lawyer. You're establishing alibi. Okay, let's see. There's this one here. No, the same thing. Disposition. Notice. Index. I think this is. Ah, yes. There's one of the receipts. No, that's the. No, that was the. the I already showed you that one. That was the. I guess the fee the, the appointed court lawyer was supposed to get. Yeah, that was indigent. I wasn't supposed to pay nothing. Okay, that's the order withholding adjudication where we showed you that. So where's the information file? It's one of these start the receipts. That's uh no that yeah, yeah, those are all the cases each month of each court date. Index. It's gotta be these. Disposition, maybe these are them. Uh six judicial calendar. Uh what is this? Obtaining property. This is the statue. This is just a paper saying trip ticket. I forgot what that meant, the trip ticket. Some kind of form filed by the judge. Let's see. These are ordinary. Oh, fuck. Where am I? Uh, where they look like so I know where I bought them. There's one of the Superior Court or Count 4. In fact, I already showed you guys that. I showed you that the, 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 the outcome, what they're saying. They said that I lied. I was convicted of four felonies, which I was not. Speak the truth here. I got so many documents. I just got to, if I need help to put this up, to display it right. I got to get these settings. And I don't understand what is set wrong. Official receipt. There's one receipt. Where did I get these at? Is it on this page? This is fingerprint. I got four pieces of pages like this with each check being paid in full. And then the paper where the judge signed off it that I paid every the court said I paid everything. I'm gonna find a I'm getting a little tired here, so that's why I, when I started printing, I go, yeah, they're gonna say it's, it's easy to say, oh, you could have you could have wrote those documents yourself. So that's why that's what they did. How do I know they didn't change anything? I know they didn't show you nothing of the truth. You know, this was uh that was uh what I was I already showed you guys those. Uh, maybe I'm in the wrong place. Notice, notice, pretrial, hearing. I got to read all this stuff. Great court, judgment for attorney, non index complaint, direct capus. Maybe it's here. Oh, six pages are here. This is the capus. No, that's the check. I already showed you guys that. Where are my receipts? Okay, I got to go back, I think, to the next. What's this say? Error. Right, okay, now here's the cases again. Is it the second one that has the receipts? No. All right. Pain of pain. The receipts are coming up. We gotta re log in. I just want to show the receipts and then I'll be done for the night. Um, like I said, this is what they look like. I did print it. I mean, you guys know I'm telling the truth, but there's four pages like that for each check. Each one was paid, and then I gotta find a paper here that shows where they signed off and said that I paid everything. If I didn't do what I was supposed to do, I wouldn't have got the deal. I I wouldn't have, they wouldn't have withheld it. They would have convicted me and I would have went and did time. You understand? That was the whole, the whole thing. Um, check we already went over that. Count two, count three. There was a count three, four. There's this with the individual cases. Oh, yeah, this is a right here. Waiver right to speak to trial. Hearing. Free trial, free trial, notice of free trial. These are all the court dates. I already showed you guys this. Investigate cost. And there was an investigated cost that was put into Every time they do, a cop could charge, I think, $100 for every hour they investigate a case. They, they have the right to charge you. You, you. As a defendant, you get a good part of your payment. Bond set, that was my bond. I think I paid. I think I paid 2500 2500 25. I think I took a total of 5000 a bond. I took everything I had, bailed myself out. Um, yeah. Now, here's the key. This is from, I, I know where this is at. I'll show you this. But here's, if you guys see right there, uh, let me see. This is, uh, 
Let me open this up. Okay, I don't know. If, can you read? Uh, I, don't know. Where, I wish I had a mark. One of those markers. Oh, I got one right here. Highlighter. Hang on. Hey, you got a highlighter? Huh? Honey? Baby, you got a highlighter? Wait a second. Oh, let me see. I don't have a highlighter, so let's see where exactly I put my finger at. Date of the charges, which I hit that button and showed you actually. That was the button I hit. We already saw that. I know, I know an hour to go. So let me show you. Go back in here. I know where to go now, so I can show you what I'm reading there. So I want to go here. It's um, gotta click the first. Oh, this is 13. These are the, all the cases. 13. I told you it was 13, which was the year uh, 11008, and it was 1014, 1015, and 1002. Four checks. Oh, 002. 015, 014, 008. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, a good arm. I'm trying to highlight. But I, I'm going to show you on here. I got to re sign back in. Time's out. So. Hang on. Redo this again. Okay, no, no, I'm sorry. I, could, I, I should turn them off. I keep them all on. Sorry. I could still. Do this, yeah. That's I can see it's okay. Yeah, no, you can turn them all the way off. I don't. It's not gonna bother me. I can still see pretty clear here. Okay, so search. Logger back up. Tired man. I had a long day. All right. So now, then did I do? Oh yeah. Let me go back here. Okay. Is this the page I want? Yeah. This is the page I want. Right, so now let me find it. Another reason to claim the charges is thirty dollars, forty dollars. We're all paid on cleaning property. Indigent criminal defense fee assessment sentences. Pull this up here. The disposition. I'm going to show you guys. Just reading what, what I want to show you. Hearing date date of Mr. Pay cost. I gotta go well down here. Notice of hearing. Retrial waiver. When I get to the right part, so you see it. All right, bond set, balance. Uh, like this says, I owe fourteen dollars. What's this fee? I was released, paid in full, right above it, five something. Now it's saying there's there, that there's some fourteen dollar bill. I have no idea. I didn't even know these exist. And they're like, you're trying to cheat the courts. No, I was paid, released by the courts that I paid everything in full. So this $14 charge, I have no idea what this is. It just says balance due $14. I have no idea what this is. Nothing was late. I paid everything on time. So I have no idea what these added fees. I'm going to find out tomorrow, though, because if it was part of what I had to do, it would there'd be zero balance. When I did everything, everything was, and I don't, I haven't looked in here in 11 years. This was at 13. And then they discovered it. They said that I owe the courts. Well, what I have in files and what was signed by judges and prosecutors says I paid my debt. So I'm not lying. They discovered something I knew no knowledge about. I'm being honest. It's some $247 star standing. If it was part of the case, the case would have never been resolved. I would have been thrown in jail. And people don't understand that. There was a deal in play. If I did my part, they would honor their part. But wherever this is, this has got to be something with a third party. Someone's trying to hammer me for some kind of check. Fourteen dollars on that one. There was another one for twenty-eight. I just, and I didn't, there was one even on there when I was looking earlier. So I don't know what it is. I have no idea. I'm being as truthful as I could be. I mean, all of a sudden I owe fourteen dollars after eleven years. I mean, come on. 
promise you that when I show them, here's all the papers saying, here's saying I paid everything in full. I don't know what your problem is, but uh, that's, I don't know you guys nothing. And I guarantee it. I'll give them a good argument because I know I lived up to my obligation. I'm trying to find a page that shows I just had it. Here's the one sponsor I just on here. Judgment, state, amended. We already took them out. I showed you guys all those places. I'm trying to see here. Oh, no. Where's the. No. No, it's not there. Chief Jason. You know how you got toe by plate now and they took all the toe boots down? They just paid all by toe by plate. You know, you get a monthly bill. Whenever you go on a toe roll to Florida, it just clicks your plate and then you get a bill in the mail. You just paid those yesterday. I don't cheat people, man. Well, I'm using a toe way. I pay for that. I'm a taxpayer, man. Because I'm a felon. I don't mean I don't pay my tax. I can show you the receipts on those. I just paid them yesterday. Yesterday paid. Okay. Called the Sun Pass. See? Paid. Jesus Christ. These guys make me out to be some fucking vile person man. to stand up for what I believe in. If you can't stand up for yourself. What are you going to stand up for in life? Count four. Payment. I don't want to talk. I got to talk into the mic. Sorry about that. Um, okay. I don't know you see. Look at the dates when this all started. When I wanted, I just had it in front of me. Okay, that's not that page. Okay, so it's not on this page. All the way to the top. So we established that they were a business check. They did. He said I did. It wasn't. I established that I was arrested for four felony charges. Didn't deny that. Warrants were issued. I was a fugitive from justice with four individual felonies. Each check was a felony. Went in there. I didn't have to, I didn't admit of any guilt. Uh, withheld judication. Showed you the signed document on the website. They didn't show you that. They couldn't. They, they said, I was convicted of felonies. I'm a liar. No, I was not. And they were, yesterday, we are going to show you the proof. Go ahead and lie. Come on, Joey. Come on and face us. Come on. Get out of it now with the lie. We just showed the proof. No, you didn't. You showed the same documents you showed last week, the week before. And you tweaked it, and you lied to get content. You want me to come on to debate you? So you can make content. Do I look green? I've called them out. They tell every day they got the proof. And all of a sudden now, they and their 100% belief is I'm the one that struck OJ. This is their belief. It went from they had the proof to now it's that. Who else could it have been is what he said. His last half an hour yesterday. Who else could it have been? It wasn't one of us. We wouldn't do that. We're content creators. You're a lying piece of shit. You got no allegiance to that man. You don't know that man. Like, he's been nothing but a friend to me. You have tried to pawn it off to, to blackmail my ass and set me up. You most damn well one of the four of you fucking did it. I promise you that. They didn't expect OJ. They really thought he they was. Now, he sent me a DM. I choose to believe you. I hope in his heart he knows because I did not do it. But they were going to prove that yesterday. I still don't see the proof. They made up fake documents like I was having a conversation with Dabble Story in that video. I promise you, they ain't got no proof. But they went from, they had proof to the last half an hour. Well, who else could it have been? He lies about everything else. Of course, we're not going to believe him. He's the guy that did it. But I haven't lied about nothing, have I? They got, they're going to convince you that tomorrow. They're going to convince victory. They proved everything. No, they didn't. They didn't show anything but what they wanted you to see. They showed 
he was lying. He's convicted of four felonies. I was arrested for four felonies. Very true. They said I was convicted. I was arrested. They said there was no deal in place. I signed a paper of admitting guilt. No, I didn't. Withheld adjudication. I gave you guys the website. Pinellas County Clerk of the Courts. Put my last name, my first name, 12865, and see for your motherfucking self. When you do that, I hope you have the decency to say the way they explained it and what we see in fucking proof and you go through every document. Don't just look like they did and pick what they wanted to show you. Open everything up like I did today. And I hope you were decent enough to say you're not the liar. There's people that have said that in my chat many times. He's the most honest dude in the devils, and they are right. And there's going to be people that are going to say, you're a fucking liar. You, everything here was fake. Fuck you. Okay? Get a life. I dox my own self. I tell my entire history by myself several times. And they get to, they get to take the truth and make it to a lie to make me look like a scumbag because they're the scumbags. They're not none of your friends. Promise you that. If they can rob you, they will. If they can dox you, they will. If they think you got a show, they're going to troll the shit out of you and take you down. That's what they do. That's all they are. And if you, that's the type of life you want to live, you fit well in with them. If, you want, if you're a fan of the Dabbleverse and want people that do real stuff, no, people are stupid, brother. You're right. But enough, am I said, continue to just let them do this to me and just like I'm a pussy? It's not going to go away. People are very mistaken. They hate, they got a hatred for me that deep because I stand up to them and I talk back to them and I call them out. I can't tell you how many nights and days they go, we got the proof. We promise you. I've been waiting for them to prove one thing they said about me. And I sat back because I laughed because I know I got the real documents and I see what they're doing. And when you got 50 documents in one case, and they only show you four pieces of what they think is going to be enough evidence to show me that I'm a liar. Well, that's why I'm, all, I'm inviting all of you to go to this public website, put my name in Catalan Joseph Samuel, 12865, see for yourself. And I hope after the results, you're going to say, these piece of garbage Joey C is 100% legit. And if you don't, shame on you. I got one more thing I want to look up, and then I'm done for the night. But they're not, they don't get to do this stuff. They don't get to lie on me no more. I can't allow it. Now I got here, 65. This is me uh, operating vehicle without insurance. I, I've let my insurance lap a few times. Commercial insurance is, is to hammer me for the cabs. 3000 a year per car. And you ain't, when you don't make your nut and it's slow season, man, it's hard, man. You got you to gotta Peter to Paul, man. You got to work at like 12, 15, 16 hour hack at a cab, man. To make the nut. And the nut's big when you own cabs, man. It's big. You got to pay for the maintenance. You got to pay for the insurance. You got to rent the, if you're in Hillsborough County, you had to rent the medallions from the people that own them. Not everybody had a medallion or a, or a tag for the, you know, Hillsborough has is, you know, big cities like New York and Chicago. They got medallions that are like lottery out to people. You don't, can't even buy them anymore. They're worth millions of dollars, but they have a lottery in New York and Chicago that like eight or nine lucky people every year get to win a medallion. And they're worth a million dollars each. Well, Tampa didn't have medallions. They had uh, um, permits. And they were worth about, they were sold for about 100 bucks when, they, when the people got them. And some people were getting two, 3000 a permit. But if you were a big company and you had all the permits, he'd rent them out to you. I paid for my, my, my two cabs. I kept it. 300 a week he charged me for each, each, each permit. It was his permit. He was the yellow cab company. I was an independent guy. I paid 300 extra. I charged the driver. The driver paid it out of his pocket. They paid me my 300, paid him his 300. Their release was 600 a week. That's what I got per cab for the ones I owned. 300 went to them for their rent, their, just their rent the permit because I couldn't buy my own permit. I didn't have the clout to do it. You got to have clout. You got to have someone on the city board. And it's not, you just don't walk in and buy them. I mean, just because you own cabs don't mean you can buy permits. You got to know people. Very political. but. Louis Louis Minardi, who owns the yellow the family that owns the yellow cab in Tampa, he he had he owned he had the market on it. So 
So he, people he liked, he would rent them. And 300 was a fair price because you could make 300 a day if you know how to drive, if you know how to hack a cab. Big, big money if you know what you're doing. 300 a week was nothing. You know, I, I, I did three to 500 a day on some days, man. But then when you had those slow days, you know, you barely break 125 bucks. Gas alone, you got to pay gas. If you're paying three thousand a year, uh, three thousand a year per insurance per car, that's about three hundred. That was thirty six hundred a year, three hundred a month. Twelve times three is thirty six. That's what each car you have to have a million dollar indemnity insurance when you drive a hack cab with passengers. Very very high. It's very expensive, and the more taxes you have, you have got to have like fifty cabs or more to get it for like two thousand per cab. Louis Minardi owns like one hundred fifty cabs, so he only paid fifteen hundred to two thousand a car. Guy that owned one, two, three cabs like me, three hundred a month for the for the insurance. And if you didn't have it, and you got in an accident with somebody, a passenger, you're done. You have to have it. These are enforced laws. If the code enforcement pulls you over for tax commission, and you don't have the insurance on there, and you got a broken molding in the seat, they take you out of service. They 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 take your living away until you, you fix those things. If you got caught with no insurance, you're suspended. They take away your hack license for 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 a couple months you don't play it's a, it's not it's a, you you seriously got to run the business legit you don't get around things it's not a thing to get around transport passengers get an accident with somebody and get hurt and they get hurt and you don't have the proper insurance forget about ever have a driver's license you're done and i didn't jeopardize i wasn't a guy that would jeopardize my license i took my my company serious i i, I i've owned several businesses i had a detail shop that was successful i owned cabs had a couple businesses that were successful. My problem is I get bored. I get bored and I sell. I uh, bought into a company with two guys that I that I hacked a cab with, and they started. They they were they you know how Uber has the app and and well these guys came up with the first Florida app. Uber just steamrolled everybody because they just had the right Indians from India that built their apps and they were just ready to. Just, they went into Las Vegas, Nevada. Which, when you're a Nevada cab, you don't pay, you don't rent a cab in Nevada. You, it's a 50 50 split because the taxi commission in Nevada takes their piece. So, you don't rent, if you drive on the California side, they'll lease the car to you for months. Some, some is by the shift, some is by the week. But in Nevada, there's no, you're driving a company or a company driver. It's a 50 50 split. So, that means the meter has to be written down. Every fare has got to be written down. There's no way of cheating them. The only way of cheating them, which they got slick, that the companies put cameras so they could watch the drivers. Before they did that, if a driver wouldn't, he took a flag, every driver got to pay gas. So the companies know that. They say, we know he's got to chip $30, $40 a day to pay his gas. They, they, they overlooked that. But with the Nevada cab, if you got caught doing that, you got one before the Nevada commission. And if you didn't turn that meter on and they got behind you, you go to jail. So a little different in Nevada. So it's a, it, it, you got the meter's got to come on everything written down. It's a 50-50 split. The company gets 50, and you keep your tips, but you pay for gas. Now, I've got drivers that were good. They, they knew to be at the right place at the right time, and someone come in, they don't turn the meter on. Uh, but then they got slick because they put devices in to know the car's moving. So if the car's moving, why are you not on the cab stand? You're not a cab that pays the lease, so you shouldn't be roaming around looking for flags. You've got to be where we tell you to be because you're an employee. And once they figured that out, then it was hard for those drivers even to make to make their gas. But drivers did it. Right? We all did it. You know, we had to pay forty, fifty dollars gas. And if you, let's say you had a hundred, let's say you had a slow day and only a hundred dollars taken in, fifty of it goes to them, fifty goes to you, right? That's the best part. At least go home with fifty bucks. But now you got to pay gas. You got to pay. So you made nothing. You put the fifty in gas, and you went home with zero. So they would, they would, they would grab a couple flags without turning the meat on to pay for their gas the companies knew that they even said that in the in the orientation listen we're not telling you we're, we're cool with you stealing but we understand the business and the slow days so what we're saying is we turn our cheeks here on some things but if we catch you making more than 30 40 dollars and it better be for gas you're going to get written up and you're going to go to jail and they did they let, they let guys slide making hustling 30, 40 bucks. The, the guys did right. They put it in the gas tank. And if they only went home 50, it wasn't right to let a guy go home broke. That wouldn't be a set a good example. But there was days drivers didn't know how to do that. And, and they only had a hundred hour day. Well, $50 only goes to them. And they can't, the next 12 hour driver, you got to fill the tank up for him. 
can't give them an empty car. But now you fill the tank up and you go home to your family. You drove 12 hours a day and you came home with zero money. You came home with negative. Cab business is like that. Unless you build a clientele base. I had, I had 300 clients that went to the airport every month. I had a great business. I charged 30 to 50 bucks a pop. I had 300 customers faithful, loyal to me. I had every Canadian coming in that were snowbirds called me direct. I, uh, I had a system, man, that I hustled, man. I made a, I made a, but what good did it do? What, and then when I owned a couple of cabs, leased them out, I was a degenerate gambler. My buddy came over one night. He was in trouble. He was, uh, he caught a case and he, he decided he was not going to go to court because he, he was going to be sentenced to five years of prison. So he goes, calls me up. I used to drive him to court. We get in the car and he's not in a suit. I go, what's going on? He goes, I'm not going to court. Let's get out of here. I go, you got to go for your son. He goes, no, they could catch me. So he, he went, he ran. Warrants come out. Took him about six weeks to catch him. He goes, listen, I need a hideout. You got to hide out at your place for a couple of weeks. All right. So I'm working, driving a cab. And he's in my office. And, he, and I come home and he goes, I counted 35,000 in losing scratch tickets in your drawer. I go, yeah, that's what I'm going to write off on my taxes. Because you could write off your losses versus your wins. If you know what you were, if you did it legitimately, you could do that and you get a tax break. So I had saved every lost ticket. And I used to buy 25 hour tickets, count 35,000. It was the, the, what I lost in the year, but I, but I cashed out 60,000. So I really was ahead that year, but I, I had 35,000 lost tickets and I turned them into my accountant and he, and you get the portion to write off. He couldn't believe I was that deep in the gambling. I go, man, that ain't nothing, man. And you're making five, 600 a day. And you go home and you got to pay your rent, you pay your bills, and you still got money coming in like that. And you got other drivers paying the lease. Shit. I was at the horse track. I was gambling. I was doing everything. Dumb thing. I should have saved all that money. I wouldn't be in the boat I'm in now. If I'd have saved a tenth of it, I'd be, I'd be wealthy. But that's not my style. I didn't, I was dumb. I like to gamble. I don't do it no more. I can't. I mean, I just don't, I don't have the means no more. I don't have to drive no more. I'm older. I don't, I don't. I had good work ethics my whole life, but I'm, I paid, I worked 30 something years, man. I deserve my retirement, you know, even though I should probably go do something. I should go back and hack a cab. I could, I enjoyed that. It was, you know, I was good at it. It's a good living if you know what you're doing. But, uh, now I'm in a dabble verse. I'm conning people and I'm getting all their money. That's what I do. That's what I'm labeled as. I'm labeled as that kind of stuff bag. Okay. I'm going to show you something here. Uh, this is all traffic shit. Traffic, unlawful speed, improper tag, operating veto insurance. Uh, this is all me. Unlawful speed. I had a heavy foot in the cab. I got, I got a ticket every 18 months. Maybe every 12 months I got a speeding ticket. And I had a commercial driver's license too, so I had to do. They don't give you. You can't do school when you got a commercial driver's license on certain things. The points, you got to take the points. You get so many points, you lose your license. So. I had a heavy foot, but I, I fought a lot of tickets. I beat, you know I, mean? I beat a lot of speeding tickets. You know, perfect timing. The cop didn't show up. You know, it goes a long way when, 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 when you're contested a ticket and the, and the arresting, the, the, the ticket writing is not there. They usually go, they usually got someone that comes for them and says, well, they can't make this court date. They got, they're investigating. So the judge will get them on one pass. Okay. New court date. Go well, the second court date, not there. I'm saying, listen. That's two times. Come on, this got to get tossed, and I usually got to toss. I beat I beat a, a seatbelt violation because I went into court, and you're gonna think, am I a genius or is this stupid? And I said, Judge, I own a motorcycle. I don't have to wear a seatbelt on my motorcycle. Why do I have to wear a seatbelt on a car? It should be a choice. He looked at me. He goes, You got me there. You drive your motorcycle. I go, You damn right. I go. They don't make me wear a seatbelt on a motorcycle. He bought it and tossed a seatbelt violation. I, 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 I made, it, made him believe it, and it worked. It worked for that one time. But, I mean, I got creative. I got to beat this ticket. How am I going to get out of this ticket? Well, Judge, how come, uh, you know, there's seatbelt laws in Illinois, right? Yes. But the motorcycle don't have to do that. It's a vehicle, an operating vehicle. He agreed with me 110%. He said, look at the prosecutor. He's got in there. He ain't lying there. Case dismissed. I also beat two red light tickets in Florida 
I went into court and they said, you could, it's $183. You want to just pay it? We'll drop it to 100 No, I'm with contestant. You contested it. We got you on camera. I go, well, I want to face my accuser. He goes, what do you mean? I go, law states I have a right to face my accuser. He says, the accuser is the camera. I go, and those are not calibrated right. The companies have been caught cheating. Uh, if you look, a lot of vehicles have been across. It was still yellow. Once you're halfway through, if it's yellow, it's not a ticket. You could clearly see that. And the judge looked at me, and he goes, you do have a right. The law states you. So you want to talk to the can I want to, I have a right to face my accuser. Tossed. They thought I was nuts. You know where I got that from? I was scrolling on YouTube and I was watching these lawyers that do traffic. And one of the lawyers did a video on it and said, go in and challenge that you want to, you have a right to face. You. I tried it. It worked. The third time the judge says, nah, we're, we're, we're a little bit more knowledgeable now. So I got knocked the third time I had to pay. Twice I, 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 I beat it. It worked for me twice. And that lawyer from says, just contest it. And uh, I did. I always contested anything I get in the speeding ticket or, or traffic violation. I'm not going to just roll my money over. I'm not. There are sovereign citizens with armed men that pull you over and lie and write you tickets to steal your money. I'm not going to let them steal my money. I'm not letting it happen. I'm going to contest it. If I lose, I pay. I beat a lot of traffic. So I was just knew how to talk. Does that make me a bad scumbag? Would you not? If you could get out of paying a speeding ticket that could cost you your license or points or you know you're guilty, you let your insurance lap, but if you think you got it's a lame way, but you're going to take a shot, wouldn't you take Is it worth taking a shot? Or you just roll over and pay them because they say you got to pay? That's stealing. Just because they're cops and cities don't mean they don't take your money and steal it. That's my whole point. But that's why I'm, I'm, I, I had to do this no more. As a radio god, yeah, I, I, I like the radio. Um, I'm poor, though. I, I didn't stay on block. Block talk radio is so obsolete, the system. They charge you $39 a month. I don't mind paying that. It's that you have nothing but problems. Half your shit doesn't get taped right. So that's why they give you a 50% discount code for six months and drop it to 19 But I to this day, everybody, block talk radio, so they're, they just... They have all kinds of problems with their studio. You always wind up having problems. So I just, I love, prefer to do that. I enjoy that. I don't have to be live. I don't have to, you know, have a chat room. I'm on the radio. I like that. But they just suck. I can't find a, a, a good, a good uh, station that I could. That's why people told me I should go to these AM stations to put an application to try to get a show on AM radio. You know, I, I, I've already admit. I came in the devil for so green, I didn't know what I stumbled into. Now, it's like they said, it's addicting. It's hard to pull yourself out. But I'm not going to let nobody lie on me no more, man. I'm not. I'm not. It's not fair to me. I showed you. I proved again. I showed you the real proof. They claim they have the proof that I'm a liar every way to Sunday. But when it comes to show the proof, they don't. I told you where to go to look up everything I showed you so you could see I'm being 100 with all you guys. I know a lot of people don't like me. They think I'm an arrogant prick and I got a big mouth and I just talk, talk, talk. That's not true. I fight for what I believe in. I don't let people, I don't let people dictate anything to me. I stand up for what I believe. I'm, I try to be a leader. I don't want to fight and have arguments with people. I'm not going to let them. I'm just not a guy to just walk away and shut up. I can't do it. I'm not built like that. I'm sorry. If they don't have the right to sit there and do whatever they want, say what they want, and then I, I can't bite back, that makes me look like a punk. I'm not a punk. I got values, and, and a lot of people don't like me. A lot. A lot of Melton people trolled me. And I'm the most troll guy. I don't deny that. Don't mean I got to fucking lay down on them. Third scum. I'm telling you guys, they lie. When they got the whole truth in front of them, they can't even do it right. They tried to convince you guys last night. I'm lying. I've just proved every, disproved everything they said. Four hours of wasted bullshit that they bought live views. They didn't have. That was not legit. There's no way you're going to convince me that was legit. Sorry. Not with them guys. So 
You guys are going to make your own form. I hope, I, I just, I got no reason to lie. I don't. That's the best part about it. But they're going to come at you guys tomorrow because they're going to see this people that are that are here playing, that are in the chat room, but are really, their, their eyes are going to go back. So they're going to come up with some stupid angle to tell you guys, I'm still the liar. I'm the scumbag. Okay, whatever. It's cool. But I'm not. Credit is goes where credit is due, man. If I'm wrong, I admit it. I'm not pushing everything. Oh, that was a mistake. I should have. No. I'm not that type of guy. I had four dabs and a pot of coffee for breakfast. Hey, brother. I love Donkey Kong. And then, man, a good dude, man. You guys are all, you know. I, I mean, I think me and Flimsy, me and Flimsy had a few, few, uh, Flimsy didn't like me in the beginning. Flimsy hated me. He trolled the shit out of me, didn't you, Flimsy? Don't lie. I'm cool. Me and you're cool. I'm about to get real British up in here. Well, that's cool. You know, get British, but you better control your boys that lie. I just made them look ridiculous. Went to an international market, got some spotted dicks and some mushrooms. <laughs> Flimsy, I can't hate you, brother. You gave me a hard way in the beginning. You were one of the big, you were one of the clo trolls that came at me hard, but you're welcome here anytime, Flimsy Greenberg. You're all right, my boy. Joey carpet still lined with homeless. No, 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 not in a long time. I, I was just, like I said, I was helping my son-in-law out and uh, he is a, he is a character. He's definitely a character, but you know, still a human being. You know, he was a fucking drug addict. Fucking smoked that spice, man. Fucking, I couldn't stand it. They fucking told him, don't smoke that shit in my house. Clean the fucking shit up every day with the fucking blunts. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, and this family, though, no matter what, man. So whether he was a piece of shit or not, I still gave him a roof to, to help him out, you know. He's not, he was, and he is not Mexican. He was a Puerto Rican and Dominican. He looked dark. He looked like he wasn't black. He's a, he's a Latino. Um, and that was my son in law, my legitimate son in law was a fuck up and he's back in jail going to prison again so 25 years old third time in where's he going in life nowhere never gonna learn his lifestyle is what it is i mean i gotta be a jerk off you know i'd help any one of you guys if i knew you truly knew you guys and you were homeless i'd, I'd give you my a, a cot and a fucking sleeping bag i'd help you out that's just me man it's not it's, it doesn't cost you nothing to be kind to somebody don't sometimes just being kind to somebody goes a long way with people you know but then people just people people like i come from the clue they like misery they really do there's some people that just like to inflict misery so i've been on for a few hours i hope you enjoyed it i hope you see that please please the the breaking news about what i was for two years please if i'm lying i'm i'm out of here I know I shocked a lot of people. Left baseball for two years, and I took up the family trade. 87-2, called the merit board in Cook County, do some investigating work, see me on those merit board pages. I'm going to order them so I have them. If you can't find them, I'll show you. I, 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 that, I know a lot of people were shocked. They, 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 they get played every day. I'm glad they think I'm dumb. It works to my advantage. Uh, these children are getting ready to be schooled really hard. And they are just, they've said they're not going away, that I'm an old man. They're going to tear me apart. Now, good luck with that. By myself, blindfolded, both my arms chopped off. They couldn't beat me. Trust me, they don't have the smarts. I love everybody. Flimsy, have a good morning, my brother. Everybody, I appreciate you hanging out. Cab driving is crazy. Good. Let me tell you something. People look at cab drivers like they're scum. You, I, you can make $100,000, 150000 a year driving a taxi if you know how to hack right in some cities. It's big money, man. But you, you, when you rent those cars it, in a city like Chicago, I think those guys pay 1000 to 1200 a week just to rent the car. Now, if they got to rent the medallion, they're worth millions of dollars in New York and Chicago, the medallions. And those guys get sometimes 10000 a month even more than that to rent a medallion because you could own the car, but you don't own a medallion. You got to have a medallion to drive in the city. So you got to pay somebody. See, these guys that get lucky and own them, it's their interest to rent them. 
that's where they make their money. You got four or five permits and four or five medallions, and you get twenty thousand a month rent. Four or five, that's a hundred grand a month. You're sitting down at the work a day in your life ever again. You used to be able to get them cheap. You used to be people were smart. Those old timers were smart when they got them for dirt cheap and 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 bought them. Kind of like the Bitcoin when it was cheap, people were smart, invested, and look at what it's looking at. It was it's, sometimes you got to take a chance and you got to just you got to you got to gamble. Who thought that New York medallions for cabs would be worth a million dollars? I'm sure nobody thought that. Who thought Google would be what they're worth? Come on. It's all gamble, right? A little raisin bran, you know. I wish, you know, I I used to like eating raisin bran. I used to. I really did. Thank you for everything, guys. I really, I just, like I said, I, I can't keep it more real. Good night. We'll continue this tomorrow. I'll dive deep into a, I got, I'm waiting for some paperwork to come in. Maybe I'll do some. I'll show some of my documents for the federal case tomorrow. But it, they don't get to lie on me no more. You tell them they're making the biggest mistake of my life. You guys can open their eyes. They just need to go away, and I'll and I'll stop. But I'm not gonna. I'm gonna be hated. A lot of people are against the one thing because they look at me like I'm John. Uh, it's necessary. Under, it's a whole different picture. If you really want to see what they do to me privately, I'll show you what they do, what they, that you guys don't know about. They ask for this fight, not me. I'm not generally like that, but I got to fight them the way they fight me. So, sorry. I hope you guys understand that. But I understand if you, you don't like it, I respect that. Good night. Take care.